Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Let me see. How is Remy doing from Optoman? You are too relaxed. I want people full of energies. Come on, it's Tuesday. The sun is shining outside. I'm going to talk about medical lasers for the next two and a half hours. All of you have technology that somebody else in the room wants. So let's make business. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the number 23 of the Epic Online Technology Meetings. Today, we are dealing with the beautiful, beautiful business of medical lasers. When we started on the 1st of April, first of all, Francesca said that we were crazy. She said, okay, today we start with femtosecond lasers, but can we do this whole list in a little bit more than 12 weeks? Well, we are doing it, and so far, we have a lot of energies. We keep going, and we are enjoying so much. I would like to thank you, all of you, uh, people also on YouTube channel who are witnessing this, you're giving us such an amazing feedback. It's making us so happy that we're going to continue. Oh, this is not going to stop. The online technology meetings are here to stay. As well as Epic, of course, I would like to welcome our Epic member number 561, which is actually in the room, A Photonics. Uh, congratulations for joining Epic. You make fantastic model lasers. The whole community is looking forward to do business with you. And when I was saying that uh, we are not going to stop. We have a lot of energies. We want to test it. That's true. So on the 24th of June, I'm going to do the biggest challenges, one of the biggest challenges in my career. I'm going to share an event for 24 hours straight. I know that looks impossible. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with a company in New Zealand, Southern Photonics, talking to us about system design of lasers. I'm going to finish all the way in California, 24 hours later, with presentations from Bernard Kress from Microsoft or Brandon Collins from Lumentum. 24 hours sharing an event to answer one of the biggest questions of the photonic technology landscape. Will Jose survive? In addition, today we are talking about medical lasers. So I would like to remind you that you have access to a long list of market reports, and there are two that I would like to highlight out of the 17, 17,000 market report data that we have for you. There is chapter nine of the Stratis Limited Worldwide Market for Lasers report. Read it. It's a very good read, actually. They make a scouting of each laser diode for each possible application in dermatology. It's totally worth a read. And we also bought the market report on light therapy. Also a fantastic market report for you to understand where is this market going. And in addition, I would like to remind all of you that we have now the biggest, the biggest website in finding a job in photonics, www jobs in photonics.com. Francesca, let's talk about medical lasers. Today we talk about medical lasers. Every year we have a meeting on medical technologies. Last year we had it at the Amsterdam Cancer Institute, uh, the Netherlands Cancer Institute, the Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek Hospital. It was a fantastic meeting. We had medical doctors from all over the world and then companies who were developing technologies. And today we are going to see what is the follow-up, especially in the market, in the laser segment, what can we do to keep evolving the technology needed for laser surgery. One of the keynote speakers there is going to be a keynote speaker today. You're going to be quite amazed with our opening speaker that we're going to announce in only one minute. Before that, I would like to thank the sponsors today, Altecna, who make fantastic laser optics as well as laser systems. You're going to see a little bit of what they do in the next of the meeting. Hoya, with the fantastic coatings for any kind of optics, all the way filters uh, for camera manufacturing. Exma Optics, one of our key members in the assembly of optics for any kind of laser as well as non-linear crystals. Optoman, whenever you are looking for laser optics, especially for the ultra fast, you need IBS coatings. There is nobody who does it better than our IBS hero Optoman and one of my favorite members of Epic. <laughs> I have to love all of you, but one thing I love especially, monochrome. You're looking for laser diodes in the high power for any new application. There is, you don't go any further. You go to Barcelona, you go to monochrome, and you understand what they can do on the stability, high power, all the way to system integration of the best lasers there is in the market. They cannot complain today. I did this because I really believe what they do is fantastic. Almost, almost as fantastic as... Epic expert in the laser industry, Francesca Moglia. Che cosa facciamo, Vandai? Thank you very much, Jose, for the introduction and for already uh, setting up the scene of this meeting. So as we see here, we have an awesome agenda that is really like really nice to have in a list, but lists are boring, right, Jose? So we go further to our favorite slide ever, that is the, the, the background, let's say, of the of the 
uh, of the setting of the of the scene. So, Jose, can you change the slide? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there it is. So that's uh, the, what everybody is, is waiting for. So our background or our value chain of today. So as we said already, we're talking about medical lasers. And so, of course, the first thing we think is who is using them. And as already uh, uh, Jose mentioned, we have today, as we had it in Amsterdam, uh, Stefano Regushi that will talk about uh, the clinician's point of view of the medical laser. So we will have him uh, speaking for the Swiss International Prostate Center, and we are really looking forward to this first talk. And then, of course, how do we serve it? So, for example, in our photonics world that is uh, EPIC, we have medical laser workstations, and that's why we have also the, the contribution today from Liza Laser, for example, and Irisium, but also we have in the audience uh, Saka Technology, Astro Melty, and also MD Engineering. So then, of course, medical laser workstations need also lasers. So we have here present also laser manufacturers that can be in general manufacturing, so like to six, five, and coherent, but also more specifically on groups of, of, uh, of lasers. So like laser diets, so we will have Lumix, for example, speaking, and monochrome also in the, in the audience and then slide. And of course, one of our um, funded uh, European pilot line that is called JEPIX. And also ultra fast fiber lasers also needed for medical applications. So, and that's why we have here, as already mentioned, Infotonics as a very fresh new member and Amplitude as an experienced EPIC member, let's say. And then, of course, around the laser world, we also need laser uh, all the optics around. So, for example, we have today here at Tecna. So, Sabrina was already in Amsterdam as well. So, we see her today as well again. So, uh, sorry for Aspericon. So, Sabrina, I apologize. <laughs> uh, for, so, Aspericon is here today as well, but also together with Altecna, Accetris, Exma Optics, and then FISBA. Also, we have here a, a representative. And then, of course, if we talk about laser optics, we always think about the, our free from micro optics. So, our fabulous uh, uh, pilot line that is also an European funded project that we are really committed with. And then, of course, if you need uh, laser safety, so it's always important. So we have Unibet also here today uh, with us. And, uh, and then, of course, well, we have to put together all these uh, systems that we have. So first, we, we need the medical device packaging as well. So that's why here we have expert in integration and equipment like Fantech. So we will have also contribution from them. And then we have, of course, all the services around. So that's, for example, uh, given by PLX, by Bay Photonics, and also other three uh, European funded initiatives of ours, like MedFab for photonics-based um, medical devices, Pixar that is uh, specialized in packaging itself, not only for medical devices, but in general, and then MIRFAB that is more focused on chemical sensing. Then, uh, of course, the, the, the fiber optics is really fundamental part also for some uh, medical application uh, with lasers. And then we have here also a few representatives. So we have Arc Photonics, for example, and OFE, OFS, but also Senko and IX Blue Photonics. Then, um, of course, uh, if we have, see, if, without the research, we wouldn't get new, new devices and new lasers. So that's why we have also a laser R&D uh, representative, so from Alphanov uh, Laser Centrum Manova. So thanks a lot for being here as well. And then, of course, detectors are important. So Vigo system is also here. Then the distribution of all these optics and, 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 um, and the devices is really important. So photonic solutions is also there. And then production. So we have also, uh, for the first time, I guess, AAE. So thank you for being here. And then in some application, we need, of course, also LEDs and also possibly in a future event. So we have a, a special event on UV LEDs, but today already Luminous is here. And then we have, uh, not to find so expert in, in, in medical lasers applications. So we have two consultancy um, a representative here. So Lyocon, thank you for being here, and MDC. And then, for, of course, in our photonics world, there are also um, um, some of our EPIC members that are not only devoted to medical application, but they are always really needed, coatings and filters. So thank you very much for being here and also partially sponsoring uh, these events. So Hoya, Optoman, Actar, and Optic Balzer. So thank you very much for being here. And let's not forget Optic Design. So CIMAG is also here. Thank you for being here. And now we should roll and go on with the agenda. Wow, well, I cannot believe it. 
you, you introduce 40 companies in a bit more than one minute. It's spectacular. It's, we are so happy to have Francesca at Epic, and also we are extremely happy to have also the YouTubers. So we are streaming this live event live in YouTube. So I would like to remind everyone in YouTube as well as in the Zoom channel, if you want to get in touch with any of the speakers, the purpose of the event is to do business. If you want to get in touch of, with any of the speakers, all you have to do is to send me an email, hosted.pozo at epic-asoc.com with the company that you would like to be introduced and the reason for such introduction. It is very important that we make sure that you follow up. So I would like to once again thank Caltecna, Hoya, Exma Optics, Ottoman, and the two micrometer wavelength lasers of monochrome. And I would like to give the floor to who I think was the best speaker we had at the EPIC meeting in cancer diagnostic and treatment in Amsterdam. Many people could not witness the fantastic presentation of lasers for prostate cancer, so we brought it to the online world. Dr. Stefano Regucci, thank you very much for being with us this beautiful afternoon here in the Netherlands. It's fantastic. I'm sure it's also fantastic in Switzerland. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Can I share the, the, the screen now? Please go ahead. So, yeah, yes, last time in, in Amsterdam, I just uh, uh, reported my experience, our experience, we are, we are a team about a laser, uh, laser in prostate cancer. And this time I, I want to focus the problem we have and probably we can, I hope we can find a solution with you. I think is the purpose of this, of this meeting. I'm very, I'm very happy to show you what is the problem. Our, our uh, society, we are, we are a, a multidisciplinary group treating, treating prostate cancer. So radiologists, pathologists, uh, urologists. I am a urologist, so I am, I am uh, using laser to treat uh, malignant uh, tumor and uh, benign tumor in the prostate. And I will show you why uh, it's so uh, important. Uh, the, the, the concept of laser focal treatment. So uh, prostate cancer, you can treat by radical surgery. You, you, you take out the prostate, uh, radiotherapy. Uh, there are uh, radical treatment. And what we do um, in our group is that we do focal therapy. It means that we treat only the tumor on the part of the prostate. Uh, the concept is that we have a dominant lesion that can uh, can uh, can um, kill the patient, and so we had to treat the dominant lesion and to spare the the, the structures around the prostate, uh, nerve sparing uh, to keep the erection and the sphincter to keep the continence. These do two very important things for the for the for the patient. So uh, there is three uh, part of this uh, approach is the target identification is MRI. We identify the, the, the lesion, we treat the lesion with the laser, and then we have to control that the treatment is uh, satisfactory. So it's, these three steps are very, very, very important. And important. So MRI changed everything in, in, in urology because you can, as you show, this is the, the, the prostate and this part, the peripheric part of the prostate where the, almost every cancer can develop. And here you can see on this image, where is the tumor? So it's logical to try to treat the, this tumor. And why, why a laser is so useful for the, pro, for, the, for the focal therapy? Because you are very precise, you can decide how much prostate you want to treat because you have not just to treat the lesion, but you have to take some, what we call security margins around the tumor because the tumor, this is the tumor that probably is spreading around. So we take sometimes six, sometimes nine millimeters of security margin around the, the, the tumor. So uh, the first step is to, to prove that there is a cancer. We have the MRI lesion, we do biopsy, and keep, in, keep this image in mind because we, we take the same image, the same procedure to do the treatment. In this guy, case, we, we, we take our tissue, we do a biopsy, and then on this lesion, we can do the treatment with, with the laser. It is called the fusion approach. It means that we, we have the image of the MRI and we fuse the image with the MRI with the ultrasound and we 
uh, we get the target we want to biopsy and then to treat weeks or months uh, later. So after the biopsy, we identify which lesion is, is the dominant lesion. In case of multiple lesion, the focal therapy has probably no place, so we go to radical prostatectomy. In a case like that, for instance, we have a dominant lesion anterior, so it's a typical situation where you can treat with the focal therapy. So instead of treating all the prostate, you treat the, 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 the lesion. So we, we mixed the laser with the image, is the principle of this kind of approach. Uh, is a YAG laser, laser. We have uh, some, uh, some um, position on, on term of power energy, and we can treat more or less tissue. It all depends on the, of the, of the, of the size of the tumor. Uh, first thing to do is very important is to do the preparation, to calculate the distance between the target, the rectum, and the prostate. Then we put the, the, the laser inside the, 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 the needle to treat the target. I will show you on the other images. So is a lithotomy position, we go transperineal, so not through the rectum, but through the, the skin, and we go inside this grid, exactly where we want to treat the target. And as you can see here, on this peroperatory image, we pu put the needle inside the prostate, and we try to treat the lesion, the tumor. In this case, here is the rectum, here the bladder, and up. So it's an anterior lesion. We put the needle, the laser, and we treat. What is the danger to touch uh, the rectum and the sphincter? As you can see here, it's very, very precise because I know very, very precisely giving an energy and a time at the sites of the lesion I will get at the end of the treatment. So it's always the same principle like biopsy. I treat the lesion and then I check if the lesion is treated well and do an MRI uh, 10 days after. As you can see here, the lesion of this kind of laser. You have the lesion preoperatively, postoperatively. So I treat the lesion without touching the, the, the erection nerves and the sphincter. So it's very minimally invasive. And uh, I think my six minutes are gone. It's efficient, flexible. You can do in local or general anest anesthesia. You can treat tumor uh, native or tumor after other treatment. And uh, uh, we offer, with this kind of treatment, flexible treatment for prostatic cancer. It's a personalized approach. What is our problem is in the planning of the treatment and problem in the monitoring. How to know exactly the temperature around the lesion, inside the lesion, and outside near the rectum is a big problem. So is the, the two points we want to develop, the planning and the follow-up of the treatment during the treatment, the monitoring and to know exactly the treat the lesion is well treated and we are far from the rectum or the structures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefano, for your contribution. Great. So I was not in Amsterdam, but I see why now I was, I was really excited. So when we see really uh, photonics on the field is, of course, really, really uh, a lot of uh, satisfaction because I'm sure we can help you somehow. And you said already, so monitoring and planning are your basically uh, focal point of what you would like to focus. Absolutely. Very good. So is there someone here in the room who wants to comment on this? Ah, Slava, of course. Slava, welcome. That's the, <laughs> you can unmute uh, yourself. <laughs> okay, key question. Um, in general, cancer is not a ball and, uh, and not in cube. It's something with complicated shape and uh, your definition of margin, I think so it's always kind of headache because you see pictures at X-ray uh, and it's difficult to predict when you have two dimensional picture, 
how you go deeper, you know, and where to stop. Uh, question, um, how really precise is your definition of margins or borders of tumor? So the, the definition of margins historically, with, with the focal therapy since 20 years, we, some studies showed that the tumor, we have to treat around the tumor six to nine millimeters. You are absolutely right, it's not a ball, but we do a cartography, a, a pre-plan uh, with my radiologist uh, on, the, on the MRI basis. MRI is precise, so you can calculate how many fibers, how long you have to treat to cover the lesion. Ideally, you have to do nine millimeters. Is uh, some studies with the eye view that showed that when you treat six to nine millimeters, the risk of residues is very low. But uh, uh, it's true that it all depends on which part of prostate you are. Sometimes you have no space to treat the nine millimeters, especially when you are proximal to the to the sphincter. But it's the same with the surgery. Between the surgery, you are we are cutting just around the tumor, uh, sparing the nerves and keep attention to the sphincter. But uh, I, with this kind of laser, I stay probably between four and six millimeters from uh, like margin. But it all depends on the position. For anterior lesion, lesion is very very easy because I can put two needles and I cover the lesion. And I prepared that before on the MRI. So I am sure that the precision is, is, is very good. I'm allowed for one more question. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, simply, you know, for years, we are deeper and deeper in diagnostics. Uh, simply also to use kind of needle. Uh, okay. In this case, it was oral cancer, but principle is the same. Um, you know, if uh, we can really go with a needle probe and detect where is precisely border, uh, can you simply replace this needle probe and put there your diffuser? Because I understood that you use a diffuser, correct, uh, for the heating. I, 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 I put the needle where the target is, and then I pull, I, I put through the needle the, the laser fiber. fiber. Yeah. And laser fiber is in uh, with this kind of diffusing part, correct? It's uh, diffusing. Yeah, in it's diffusing. the laser fiber is going out about uh, six millimeters. So I put the needle just behind the lesion to cover yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, the, the tumor. And how do you define, let's say, duration of illumination and power? Uh, I have some, some I, I have three, I don't know very well because I am just a urologist, but I have some, some scheme uh, to decide how long. Usually it's two minutes, three watt of energy, and uh, I deliver something about 1,800 joules. And mm -hmm. with that, I cover something like uh, one centimeter, uh, point two in the length, a six millimeters on the side. So I can uh, pre-plan the treatment before uh, deciding to put one or two fibers. Okay, okay, good. I think in the future, right, right after this meeting, we can really be connected because even temperature monitoring is one of our, how to say, topic. Our mm. fiber feels the temperature and we can simply help you, you know, to define your dosage of energy more precisely. So not too much, no barbecue in prostate, yeah, uh, but same time, not too low temperature because then you can really activate tumor, you know, which is yeah. bad, you know, so it's a kind of delicate balance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Stefano, really very interesting. I'm interested in contact right after the show. Thank That's you very much. Yeah. Uh, Stefano, maybe we have also a, a question from inside EPIC. So what is exactly uh, the temperature sensitivity that you need? So is it millikelvin or you can be a bit more rough or what is the, uh, the approximate uh, sensitivity? Usually, usually you can kill the tumor with something over 80 uh, degrees. Every, every focal, for, for instance, with the ultrasound, the focal is ultrasound is over 80 degrees. Uh, the problem is that uh, you want to, uh, to get something homogeneous all over the tumor. This is the problem. 
because uh, we have no measure of what uh, what which temperature you have inside the tumor the only measure we have is indirect measure and that uh, is clinical we do the mri after we sue the hole and then we do biopsy at six months to prove it and uh, at the moment we have something like 20 30 percent positive biopsy around the lesion but nothing inside so you know we uh, physicians we are very practical very clinical so at the moment we just we are we base our experience on the mri results after okay and usually what is the result the, the temperature resolution of the mri that you're usually they are using uh, the, the mri is three tesla mri mm -hmm. and uh, uh, i three tesla mri at 10 days and six months so at 10 days you can see the tumor is treated and then at six months you see the shrinking of the prostate but it's very difficult the, the mri at six months or 12 months is very very the interpretation interpretation is very difficult for this reason we we do uh, every time biopsy check to be sure there is no residual tumor okay yes yeah, so this is just a rough okay Slava, maybe as another comment yes please You're muted. Slava, Slava, don't go to the end, otherwise. <laughs> uh, in your yes. protocol of operations, are you allowed or do you have a chance, technical chance, to put two needles, one needle for the heating and another needle at some distance, I don't know, five millimeters, one centimeter, which will be used for the temperature control? You could. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, this is perfect because then it will be much easier for us. Okay, we'll talk after. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so there is definitely room for discussion. So Slava, I guess, is already into, into the topic and has already a, a good idea. Maybe with the, with the details, we go further offline. So it's our job also here to support this. So yeah, I see Jack has a question. Is it correct? Please, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, just, just a question. Uh, so your choice is to use uh, ND Yak laser. Is there any other type of laser you would consider? Um, let's see, a CW laser, maybe a fiber laser with uh, a longer wavelength with a better water absorption, just? Uh, for us, I, we began with this kind of laser, but uh, I think every laser, the, the, the two targets are to destroy the tumor, but to have a, a precise control of the limits of the treatment, because we want to be effica, effic, efficiency in destroying the tumor, but uh, be sure that you are not hurting rectum and sphincter. So I think uh, is not the only laser we can do. Uh, clinically, we need something powerful to 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 to, to destroy the, the tumor, but we have we 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 need a, a laser that we can control. No dispersion. I am not specialist about that, but the danger we have, and we we saw that in by experience in endoscopic surgery, that sometimes temperature is going up. And you can have some uh, side effects on the on the around the prostate. Very good. So, do we have other comments? Uh, Slava, you because of course Stefano can also be yes yes from a photonics, please. <laughs> Uh, just a very quick comment. Since you mentioned about the possibility to control actually the way laser op is working, so uh, I will be probably in touch with you because we are working with the electrically controllable repetition rates. Maybe this is something that you could be potentially interested in so that we could show tell you more about it, not to take time during this meeting, if it's okay with you. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So support offered and uh, <laughs> and happy answer from from Stefano yes Linz, you can also ask please unmute yourself please first hello yeah yep yeah, now so, uh, this is Niels from Lumi so I have one question um, to Stefano what's the limit currently for the uh, success of your treatment is it the laser is it the biopsy is it the MRI or what what limits it uh, uh, in terms of best success for the patient? Good question. Uh, uh, probably is the biopsy, biopsy and MRI. 
it means that, that when you have negative biopsy or positive biopsy with no aggressive tumor, for us is a success. But you know, there is a, a, a debate between radical treatments and focal treatments in terms of what is the success. The success for us is to keep, uh, to, to get a completely uh, tumor treated without side effects. And probably in at this moment, the best way to prove is MRI associated with biopsy to mm -hmm. prove that there is no residual tumor or if we have residual tumor that is not aggressive. Okay, thanks. Very good. So we have other questions. Otherwise, we maybe first go back to Daria because I didn't take the opportunity to let you speak a bit about Infotonics because as we said, you're a new member. So maybe we give you another few seconds <laughs> if you can introduce yourself. You are muted now and then you can tell us. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Uh, sorry, Daria, you're muted again. <laughs> Can you hear now? Yes, now nobody will touch any uh, mute command, <laughs> please. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Aphotonics is a uh, commercialization and research project from Aalto University, Finland. We were funded by the Finnish government to commercialize the laser and uh, nanomodulator technology. And we have started in January 2019, and we hope to potentially spin out in 2020 September. So quite soon, and uh, we are working with the electro-optic intensity modulators, which are created on the scalable silicon platform, very small modulators and very cost-effective solutions, as well as uh, our particular interest in the medical field is with the uh, two micrometer active mode lock fiber lasers. So active mode locking, as I mentioned, brings the potential to control the repetition rate. So we see a huge potential here and we are very, very, very happy to be a member of EPIC. <laughs> it was a long path. Thanks so much for welcoming us here. We were patient enough, but definitely it was worth the wait. Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank so <you>. both. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Daria. Thank so now. Thanks a lot. So then we go maybe on with the agenda and uh, we go to William. So I is young. William, are you ready to rock? Yeah. yeah. Very Hi. good. Hi. Floor Hi. is Hi. yours. <laughs> So is it, is it okay on your side? Yeah, okay. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you uh, EPIC for uh, to have the chance to, to present our technology and our uh, company here during this, uh, this meeting uh, on uh, medical lasers. So um, Irisium, uh, we are a, a, a young company in France uh, and we are uh, manufacturing aesthetic and medical devices, uh, especially in the dermatological uh, laser applications like uh, tetra removal, for example. So let me uh, briefly uh, just get back uh, in in the time to uh, to just uh, present the key steps on the uh, on the Erisium developments. So the the company was uh, founded in uh, 2015 uh, in France. So this is a spin-off of University of Bordeaux. Um, at that time, the team uh, decided to uh, um, to introduce two brands. So the first one, which is the subject of this talk, uh, is uh, Erysium, which is dedicated on the uh, aesthetic, laser aesthetic device uh, development, and another brand, which is Erysium Solutions, which is using the same laser technology, but in uh, uh, other fields like uh, scientific and, uh, and uh, industrial applications. Um, just a few, few, uh, few days, I would say, after the, the, the creation of this, uh, this company, uh, we started the research and the development to, uh, to move the, the, the project from the, uh, the laboratories to, uh, to a product. Um, and uh, the first uh, product, with, which was the Impulse, was introduced uh, mid-2018. Uh, and at that time, we, we started and we got the first uh, test with dermatologists. Uh, and the proof of concept of, uh, of our product and the use in uh, aesthetic application. Um, and then we, uh, we got uh, some private fundraising uh, in November 
to help us in uh, in the development of the clinical research and uh, and to uh, to improve our understanding on the process and to uh, continue to to develop that. Um, and then, and today, uh, the the company at the at that time we we are ten people and we have some uh, partners, uh, especially in in France. Uh, as an example, uh, two laboratories from uh, from Bordeaux and uh, and other uh, hospitals and uh, uh, and technology center on the uh, uh, like uh, Acuderm in, in Bordeaux to uh, to help us uh, the uh, to understand the, the skin and laser interaction. So uh, to to pursue uh, uh, this uh, development, we uh, we we plan to uh, to commercialize uh, our products uh, end of this year. Uh, in autumn or uh, early next year, uh, uh, thanks to the, the COVID-19. Um, and uh, another uh, key step uh, of our development is in 2019, uh, we, uh, we were the, the member of, uh, of EPIC. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the product, uh, which is uh, the Impulse Plus, uh, so the, the, this product is, is patented and the uh, proprietary of uh, Irisium. Um, so the, the, the state of the art of the, this kind of, of laser for this, uh, this application in a, uh, in a dermatoesthetic application. So we, uh, the, the, the commonly used laser are Q-switch lasers technology with high energy. High energy, I would say few millijoule, few tens of millijoule or more with a um, nanosecond first duration or less, less one nanosecond, few hundred of uh, picosecond. So this, uh, uh, this uh, laser technology is uh, pretty old. And uh, so this is uh, all free space optics and uh, there is some constraint uh, in, the, in, in the system. Um, and so we, uh, we introduced uh, and we used another uh, technology uh, with uh, a short picosecond uh, first duration that uh, are delivered within a burst. Um, so this is, uh, uh, some analogic with uh, uh, the the burst processing in the industry. So this uh, this 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 delivery of the of the energy is uh, atomic process, and we have painless with fewer side effects. So that's one of the of the main feature. So as you can see here on the on the on the bottom right. Uh, so we have a lot of twenty picosecond pulses, and the total energy of the uh, of the uh, the laser that is delivered on the skin is just the sum of this uh, this uh, small amount of, of energy on each each pulse. Um, so to do that, we are using the uh, the, the fiber technology, uh, and that's uh, uh, we we have some benefits, uh, especially low service and a lightweight system, which is pretty easy to use and easy to handle. Uh, and we have a fiber delivery also, which with a light uh, and piece. Um, so regarding the uh, different uh, wavelengths available, so the main wavelength is 1064 nanometer, and we have second harmonic generation with uh, some free space optics, but uh, uh, it's, it's less uh, at 532 nanometers. And we, uh, thanks to that different wavelengths, we are able to, uh, uh, to, to, to use the laser for different application like tattoo removal, the treatment of vascular and pigmentary lesions or uh, depilation. And one other uh, feature is uh, compared to our uh, competitors is uh, we are using a mo mobile uh, uh, human machine uh, interaction uh, like a, uh, it's a tablet like an uh, iPad uh, and this is uh, very easy to use to, to control uh, and to follow the, the, the treatment with the, with the laser. So to provide you some, uh, some numbers. Um, so the main repetition rate inside the burst is few megahertz. The burst uh, frequency is one to six hertz that is available. So the, the average power is 30 watt in infrared up to uh, 10 watt in the green. The spot size at the output of the, uh, the end piece is two millimeters. And thanks to that numbers, the uh, available frequencies uh, are uh, adjustable from one to uh, 100 joule per centimeter square. So to uh, just uh, briefly show you some uh, application example in the different uh, fields uh, on the on the left. So this is an example on tattoo removal. Uh, 
So uh, we can see on the on the two picture the the, the the use of the laser, and after eight treatment, we can uh, uh, almost remove the the, the tattoo. Uh, on the uh, vascular lesions uh, in the middle of the slide, so we can see a uh, circle in the in the blue on the on the picture that we uh, we can remove uh, this uh, this lesion after one treatment, and on the right this is the same uh, for uh, pigment spots, uh, and we can see on the uh, uh, for example here that we can remove the red part of this uh, of the skin here, and also after one treatment. So now the, uh, the epic question is, uh, what can they do for you and what can you do for them? So uh, I will ask uh, what, what can you do for us? Um, so uh, as I, I said in introduction, we have some partners in France, but uh, we uh, also are looking for a new European and international uh, collaboration, especially to help us in uh, developing our understanding with our laser and skin interaction, uh, because uh, on the... Uh, uh, on the uh, the uh, scientific publication, there is a, a very poor uh, uh, publication on this uh, on this uh, on this stuff, um, and we also uh, are interesting in uh, in finding some uh, new tools to uh, diagnostic or, or to uh, measure the the skin phototype uh, and also the the ink concentration, especially for the tattoo removal application. Um, and with this, uh, all, all that stuff, uh, we, uh, we, we are pretty uh, confident to, to provide more and more uh, uh, and stronger uh, scientific results to the overall community. Um, and what, we get, what can we do for you? Uh, so as uh, I've presented, we are a, a manufacturer of laser uh, in, the, in this field or uh, aesthetic market. So we can uh, also... Uh, uh, in the in joint collaboration, uh, share lasers or, or knowledge, uh, and we, uh, we 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 are a startup company, and we are developing uh, our expertise in this uh, in this uh, aesthetic application in this field. Uh, and I'm sure we uh, we we can find uh, other uh, other way together, uh, like uh, find new suppliers and new uh, new stuff, new ideas. So uh, that's uh, in uh, in our. Uh, join interest. So I'm open on discussion now, and also you can contact me on this uh, following email. So Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, William. You are an epic rock star. I mean, already for a year, and you already highlighted us as one of your key developments in the company manufacturing the company timeline. You also answered the epic question already by default. So let's try to find you partners. Uh, you highlighted one of your needs is to measure ink concentration. Uh, do you have any work on that? Are you, have you tried? Is there anything that we should try to investigate in terms of partnerships here? So for, for, for the moment, we have uh, some, uh, some ideas uh, uh, and we are, uh, have not decided yet uh, how we can, uh, we can do that. Uh, uh, we have two choice. Uh, we can uh, measure or find a solution to measure the, uh, this ink concentration before the treatment or at a different step of the of the treatment, or uh, we can also uh, find try to find solution to uh, to to measure this uh, this concentration on the flight. I would say during the treatment to help the the uh, the, the, the doctors to uh, to in the process. But it's very difficult. We we have some ideas like uh, we can use like the OCT for example, but it's uh, it's very uh, complicated. Uh, um, I would say uh, systems uh, and difficult to be uh, in integrated into uh, into our uh, our tool. Uh, so we are uh, totally open on that, uh, and uh, we we are looking also for new to, new ideas to to challenge us in this uh, uh, in this uh, in this field. You know what I love the most in my job to connect people, uh, and I would like to whenever you have a challenge, a challenge in an optical instrument, uh, the the mm -hmm. epic member to go to is FISBA. So not only they are great micro-optics manufacturers, but they are also great instrumentation integrators of micro-optics. I would like to mm -hmm. introduce you to a friend of mine, Henning. Henning, how are you today? I'm fine. So you I came to today to a meeting on medical lasers. Yeah. Uh, what can FISPA do for this community? Uh, what can companies like Arisom do for you? What we can do today is to design and develop and supply uh, lens systems for uh, lasers for your application. 
but uh, the laser itself is only a peripheral component for us these days. This was different in the past, but today we are pure uh, lens maker. <laughs> when it comes to uh, lenses for the tattoo removal, have you seen any any trend in the market? For example, are you looking of different ways of scanning the beam over the, over the tissue? Is there any challenges that FISBA could share with the rest of the participants today? Um, not really. So this is a, a such a, a scanner is a, is a system issue and, and we are only a lens maker for, for such kind of devices. You're going to see, uh, William, that uh, Europe is now living a revolution on the manufacturing of micro optics. So companies like FISBA, like SUS Micro Optics, like Accetris, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget a lot, so I'm gonna, I know I'm going to remind all of them, they are really making any, a huge, huge paradigm shift in the way that we design micro optics. I have a question all the way from beautiful Hanover. Dag, how are you doing today? Okay, I um, hope I'm unmuted now. I'm doing great, as you see the sun is shining here. Um, I have a small, small question to Irosome. Um, you just said that you are looking into OCT for getting the ink concentration, and I'm quite curious about that because OCT in medical applications is one thing we do. Um, so I can imagine that you can use the reflection signal to uh, like follow up the destruction of the dye. Do you have any data on this, or what is this something you are interested in? Um, so, uh, the, so j just to, uh, to 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 reformulate your question, so you 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 are asking if we can use the main beam to uh, uh, for the uh, to 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 get uh, information on the in concentration. So that's that's your question. Yeah, you, you mentioned that you already have some uh, ideas about using OCT to do so, um, and if not, we are, would be interesting whether we could guide the OCT through the fiber and then see whether we can use that signal that would be maybe an approach that's not too easy but doable mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, so uh, we we do not have uh, already tested this uh, this kind of, of solution so uh, uh, i just uh, for for the last uh, i would say last month i, I just have a look on the uh, oct uh, uh, result and application and uh, especially on the uh, um, i would say the uh, skin uh, um, uh, I would say uh, the skin, different skin uh, um, levels. Uh, I don't know how to say that, yeah. but uh, uh, and, and and I guess uh, we, we can maybe have uh, some uh, information on the, uh, the, the 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 ink, the position of the ink uh, in, inside the uh, inside the skin. So, but uh, we we have never tried anything on that. The next question is coming all the way from Vilnius, Lithuania. Sergei, acho. Hello, hi, hi. Uh, uh, hello, William. Thank you for the presentation. I, uh, I, uh, yes, I come from OAM exactly for aesthetics and dermatology, and this is not a question really, but a comment. Um, we have supplied uh, OAM systems at 10, 1064 nanometers uh, for um, tattoo removal, mm -hmm. and, and 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 maybe you know that, but this is not. Uh, always about uh, ink, um, how many or how much ink it is in the skin. Also, mm -hmm. a lot depends on the skin type mm -hmm. and on the ink quality itself. You know, a lot of people go to Thailand and then come back and no one knows what, what's in the skin, really. Uh, and what I hear from doctors is that many of them, not many, but all of them prefer try and test. You know, they, they shoot a little bit, they try a little bit, uh, though they all have experience, but uh, they first try and see what is the effect in two weeks. Especially with the picosecond technology that they're looking at, uh, mm -hmm. because the skin really, uh, our nerve system uh, does not have, you know, picoseconds, it would not react with the pain. Mm -hmm. You could see the effect only, uh, you know, in a couple of days when it's already very damageable. So just a comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. So it's not it's not easy to, uh, to have feelings. We have another question coming from Berlin. Slava, how are you? Let me unmute you. Okay. So uh, when doctor use your laser, how um, he behaves when he see melanoma? Uh, can he detect melanoma? 
Oh, uh, so um, that's that's a, a good question. So um, I, I, as I said uh, uh, today, it's um, it's another way to uh, to treat uh, for tattoo removal. Uh, usually, with uh, the the standard, I would say, uh, or uh, other uh, uh, competitor lasers, the um, the, the doctors uh, uh, usually see uh, the some edema or scars on the skin. And uh, thanks to uh, to our um, technology, uh, so this is a, a, a thermal process. Uh, they they cannot see this on the on the on the flight. I would say on, under the treatment. So uh, the the first feedback we have from the uh, from the users, it's uh, so you you we, we see we see nothing on the flight on the on on the treatment. So your laser is not working. But as I show you on the uh, on the on the presentation. We have some very interesting results, uh, and uh, we we have to um, to help and to um, uh, yes to yeah to help the the, the doctors to, uh, to 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 use our lasers. It's another way to treat, uh, and it's another way to remove tattoos. So. Um, so then your application is only limited to tattoo, or uh, it's broader. No, it's broader. So you can uh, we, we can address also some uh, vascular lesions, um, uh, pigmentary lesions as well. Um, so uh, or also depilation, possible. Yeah, yeah. but uh, for example, this uh, cancer problems. I mean melanoma, which is really a big problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Diagnostics is really not how to say combined with a laser because in general. It, it can work because it uh, removes this stuff uh, layer by layer by mm -hmm. very thin layers, you know, maybe it's at least interesting stuff. We are simply involved with colleagues, you know, in diagnostics of melanoma. And mm -hmm. then when it's, uh, let's say, a real time answer to the doctor, he mm -hmm. can proceed with your laser. Okay. Fantastic. And um, thank you very much, William, for a great presentation. And we move ahead with the program and we go to one of the key medical companies in the EPIC network. Samir, thank you very much for being with us. Lisa Laser is an example. Tell us how we can help you. The floor and the attention of everyone is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Jose. Uh, also, thank you very much, uh, Francesca, for the kind introduction. Um, I will try to share my display right now. There we go. And I also would like uh, uh, to thank uh, the, the sponsors, uh, Exma and uh, Altecna and uh, Roya, Optoman and Monochrome. Uh, for giving the, the opportunity right now to, to present the recent advances in uh, high power, high energy two micron uh, uh, medical lasers. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the, uh, the outline. Uh, so I would like to uh, show some, some facts about the history and core achievements. After that, some general uh, issues regarding two micrometer uh, lasers. Uh, afterwards, uh, I would like to show the next generation's uh, surgical lasers, um, and uh, the talk will close uh, with a, or will end with a, with an outlook and uh, uh, some of our next uh, uh, steps. So, Lisa Laser was uh, uh, founded in 1989. Uh, we are located in Katrinburg Lindau. It's uh, uh, very close to to Göttingen. Uh, and our main business are surgical lasers uh, at a wavelength of uh, two micrometer. Um, in general, uh, we do have two product families, as you can see at the bottom uh, of the page, there is the Rivolix uh, uh, systems, which are based on uh, thulium uh, uh, lasers, uh, and the Sphinx uh, systems, which are uh, based on holmium uh, lasers. Um, of course, uh, they are uh, used for different applications, uh, soft tissue and also uh, hard tissue, for example, stones, uh, fragmentation and so on. Um, LISA is uh, R&D driven. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, uh, publications uh, around the world and also with some partner clinics. Um, and the number of our lasers uh, in the field is uh, approximately uh, 2,000. Regarding the properties, um, 
I would like to start with the right hand uh, side uh, uh, diagram. It shows the penetration depth uh, uh, and, uh, and the wavelength. Uh, we are around uh, two microns, so uh, the uh, high absorption uh, leads to a penetration depth in, uh, in uh, water and also uh, consequently in the tissue of around 150 uh, to 180 uh, microns. Uh, so the absorption uh, features uh, give us the opportunity to use uh, the laser uh, as a scalpel um, at our specific wavelength of 2013 nanometers. Uh, we observe an excellent hemostasis effect. So uh, um, the, the patient is not uh, suffering from, from bleeding and, and so on. Uh, and of course, um, the, the wavelength is nominally ice safe, um, so it, uh, it does not reach uh, the, the retina uh, and it does not uh, do any uh, yeah, damage which cannot be uh, yeah, repaired, so to speak. Uh, thanks to the silica fi fiber guiding uh, availability or feature, uh, we are using our lasers in a, a minimally invasive procedure, uh, which again uh, enables uh, patient-friendly uh, treatment. Um, the next uh, lasers generation is based on really 30 years of experience uh, regarding uh, feedback from, from doctors. Uh, what we observed uh, during this time is uh, that also the, the doctors needs uh, grow as our business is also growing so to speak, uh, and uh, there, there was a need of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a kind of dual use with, with one laser, uh, and which is also uh, resulting from the CW mode performance and pulse mode performance. Uh, so our next step uh, was to focus uh, on both uh, uh, operation modes combined in, in one single uh, or one common uh, system. Uh, so we have chosen the CW mode for the soft tissue uh, procedures uh, and the pulse mode for, for lithotripsy in, in urology, for example, uh, which is, by the way, our main, uh, main application uh, field. Um, the new laser, um, it's also called the, the hybrid laser, uh, is, so to speak, the next generation of, of the well-known uh, Revolix Duo. Uh, which combined also uh, for the first time both uh, um, operation modes uh, worldwide um, and uh, uh, the new generation, so to speak, uh, is using a head for, for both operation, uh, which resulted in a compact uh, design and very low loudness level, uh, and of course providing a versatile use uh, especially when thinking about uh, cutting and vaporization of soft tissue uh, and, uh, and stone lithotripsy. So this is the uh, laser systems uh, laser system which we are uh, introducing uh, to, to the market uh, within the next couple of, uh, of, of weeks. Um, it's also based on a diode pumped uh, solid state laser. Um, uh, we are using uh, thulium yak as a gain media. Um, and as you can see, uh, we have uh, two application uh, modes and uh, six operation modes. So the doctor is very uh, flexible uh, when using this kind of, uh, of laser uh, device. Um, we, we do have also our own uh, laser fibers, uh, which we are uh, providing. Uh, we can use here the full range from uh, 200 to uh, 940 uh, microns. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is the, the table shows the, uh, the comparison of the technological, uh, technological benefits. Um, so uh, we will introduce uh, 150 uh, watts of maximum output power uh, and the maximum peak power, which is very interesting for uh, stone uh, treatment um, uh, of more than uh, one uh, kilowatt. So our next steps, uh, of course, uh, will be some performance uh, tests on, on tissue and stones. Um, we uh, are planning to stimulate uh, a new medical application. So uh, our, our partners may, may help us uh, in, in this regard. Um, one 
yeah, issue or one hot issue, of course, uh, at Lisa is a combination with, with imaging uh, systems. Uh, and of course, uh, we are always applying for research projects. Uh, so feel free to, to contact us and uh, uh, I'm very happy to uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much, Samir, for your talk. That uh, once in a while we had really a meeting on your topic. That's uh, <laughs> very good to know. So there's a familiar application. Yeah, thanks a lot. So we had already some, so you focus already a bit on, well, you didn't answer the real epic questions really detailed, but let's say, you said you look for imaging system and then for new, exactly for a collaboration. So this is an example. And then also uh, on possible collaborations on new systems. Is there someone in the room that wants to comment on this on? Oh yeah, uh, for monochrome, yes, please. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the nice presentation, Samir. Um, did you have in mind using a direct diode instead of solid state lasers in the two micron region? Yeah, actually, uh, actually, this this is of course uh, one of my favorite topics uh, since my my uh, PhD uh, project was uh, uh, let's say connected or related to this uh, um, topic. Um, I know that there are some uh, uh, some efforts uh, uh, done by by different uh, uh, let's say uh, manufacturers of of or for laser uh, diodes. Um, if I mean, if, if there is any uh, high output power uh, extracted or delivered by by uh, laser diodes, uh, of course uh, we are very happy to to use them, uh, especially because the packaging and and uh, cooling and all the uh, other issues which are uh, related to, uh, let's say, uh, engineering, uh, yeah, topics. Uh, are much more easier than than the current systems, of course. Yeah. So it would be great to take this one offline. We we might have something that you. Sure, sure. Feel free. I'm very happy to collaborate with you. Thanks. Definitely, Elad was not asking. Just uh, <laughs> he can serve you immediately. So very good to know that uh, you can also discuss offline. We're happy we're here for for this. And then for Nils from Lumix, I guess so he raised his hand, right? Yeah, this is uh, Nils from Lumix. Um, uh, this is again a question to Sami about the same thing. So for soft tissue, you mentioned the uh, laser load is uh, feasible. So you're talking about, about the power. What is the power level you need and all the energy which is uh, sufficient for soft tissue with uh, 2 micron 1940 nanometers? Yeah, it, it clearly depends on, uh, let's say, on the application fields. Um, uh, let's let's uh, let's use, uh, for example, uh, urology for for uh, uh, BPH or prostate resection uh, in general speaking, uh, and they are let's say uh, using uh, CW output powers uh, not uh, not less uh, or not below uh, 120 watts, uh, but this is let's say uh, urology. Um, if you let's say uh, want or if you wish or plan to use it for a more uh, let's say uh, yeah application which which requires a, a bit more uh, precision and uh, and so on uh, we do also uh, provide laser systems uh, with with 15 or, or 30 uh, watts of output power uh, they are used, for example, for uh, tumor resection in in, uh, in ENT and uh, and so on. Um, so uh, the laser I presented is, let's say, more more focused on uh, on urology. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, if you if you plan to use or to expand uh, your application fields, uh, you can also relax uh, the the technical specifications. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. So now let's keep, I saw we have two questions, so Jack and then Dag. Let's keep it very quick, let's see if we manage. First, Jack, please. <laughs> hey, Samir, uh, just a quick question. Have you ever considered using a fiber laser for the two macro application? Yeah, uh, we, I did a lot of uh, fiber laser uh, development in, in, in the last, uh, let's say, uh, 10 years fr from now on, I think, yeah. Um, I know that there are some, some benefits regarding uh, fiber lasers. 
Um, but at the end of the day, uh, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, specifications or requirements uh, coming from uh, from the, 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 the medical, uh, let's say, uh, field. Um, and uh, there are different uh, uh, parameters uh, where we definitely uh, have more benefits on the on the uh, solid state uh, laser crystals or laser crystal based uh, uh, technology. Yeah. Okay, but uh, if there is any specific uh, uh, question, or we can also uh, have a talk afterwards offline. So yeah, feel free to contact me. Yeah. You might be able to convince him, Jack, who knows. <laughs> but yeah. I'm not sure, okay. because Samir, I know, eh, from my PhD time as well, he did a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Doug, you can please also ask your question. Good morning, Samir. Um, right. Coming back to this topic of integrating imaging to the modulation fiber. So what's about using OCT integrated in that fiber to get like border detection and see um, how far you can cut and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, I mean, since we are using uh, uh, fibers for, for let's say, the, the delivery of, of the laser power or laser, laser pulses, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's just a question of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, packaging or beam, beam combining mm. uh, to have this uh, uh, nice, let's say, imaging uh, tool on board. Um, of course, one, one, one can think about uh, using uh, OCT or, or, or other uh, imaging systems uh, to, have, uh, to have a better control of, uh, of the ablation areas and so on. So, yeah. Maybe we get so come over with your system and then we can start start the lab session. Okay. Very good. I guess that was the what what Doug wanted to hear, right? <laughs> Very good. So, um, so again, maybe we go a bit forward with the, with the agenda and we come back later to you. Thank you. So now we give back the mic to Niels eh, from Lumix. So now is your turn to rock. Please share your screen and the floor is yours. Okay. My screen is shared. So thank yep. you again, Epic, for organizing this meeting. I think it's a great idea. And so far, it's my first time in joining this uh, online meeting. Uh, it seems to be very efficient, and uh, it's the only chance to communicate. So thank you again for this idea and this organization. It, it works good, even technically. So um, my talk is divided into three sections. The first, I just want to talk a little bit about Lumix, what we are doing. Um, this is one minute. and two minutes and again about the products, what we can offer and what we can do. And the last three minutes about the applications which we are looking for in the medical field. So Lumix is uh, almost 20 years old now. It's headquartered in Germany. All the fab is here. We are ISO 9000 certified for more than 50 years. And the main thing of Lumix, what is we are a diode laser and the diode laser system component manufacturer. So we don't make systems which are directly sold to the clinical uh, people. So we make the components for the system integrators. The entire value chain is in-house with a thousand square meter um, manufacturing facility. So we're really a chip maker and the, all these AP designs are ours. We are proud of our wide range diet laser technology developed over this 20 years and our 100% production traceability, which I think is important for this medical field. Lumix is focusing on single emitter technology, not on bar technology. So we will learn why it's very beneficial to do that. And we can provide many wavelengths from medical application, not all, but many. So it starts at 670 nanometer with about two watts and it uh, goes over 786 nanometer with uh, 20 watts and 96 and 1086 nanometer, 1064, 980 is up to 20 watt. Then the very important 1470 nanometer is up to seven watt. And what we heard recently is a 1940 nanometer is a newest baby with up to 2.3 watt per meter. So if we, it's a next slide, what's going on here? Sorry, it doesn't move. All right, uh, so next slide is the 
platform which we developed for the medical lasers. Uh, so it's the Lotion platform and it provides multi-wavelength dark laser models with sort of key facts. Of course, the different wavelengths, 670 to 1940 nanometers. And we, the best key feature is that we can incorporate four wavelengths into one model. So the user can switch from wavelengths to the other wavelength without changing the device or changing the fiber. So that sounds to be a very good feature and very beneficial. The power scales up to 800 watt. Um, it might be a little too much for medical, but we're also in industrial fields. As you may know, to dye lasers provide very beneficial uh, properties in terms of size and efficiency and price because they're very small, uh, they don't have any mechanical parts, and efficiency is typically at 50%. So this is, if you don't look for high energy, so you can use a diode. If you use very high energy, you have to use a solid state laser as we heard from, from the French company with tattoo removal. And also not all wavelengths are available with diodes. So it's limited to some uh, where we can make um, um, semiconductor material. Single emitter technology, which we use, has the advantage of low current. So every diodes are chained electrical in series and they're maintenance free. Of course, for the medical applications, we uh, use detachable fibers from 50 to 1000 uh, micron. And also these typical customized accessories like pilot beam, power monitor, and fiber detection. All the nucleus is here. So this is the diode laser single emitter on a customized uh, flat mount. This is uh, Lumix development. And it comes in here with optics and uh, mechanics and the diode technology. Um, so next, I want to talk about the motivation, what drives it. So the driver for us, for understanding for lasers and medical, is mostly the laser tissue interaction. So it causes, I'm a physicist, so I don't know so much about this, it causes ablation and coagulation. And the driving part of this is the absorption coefficient of different materials in the human cell. So I, I take out, for example, what we heard before, the water absorption, so it ranges for the diode wavelengths with accessible over many orders of magnitude. So you can choose the right wavelengths to um, have the best treatment. And another example is the um, hemoglobin, which is in the blood, it also changes over many orders of magnitude, or the melanin, which is in the skin. So our vision is that we want to share our extensive laser expertise and collaborate in understanding of medical treatments and laser tissue interactions for new healthcare applications. Because I think this laser in medical is a very new field. So and there's a lot of things to do to understand what happens in the interaction and what is the best wavelength, the best treatment, and the best biopsy or the best um, sensors to, to help the patient. Lumix focuses on the medical market with these multi-wavelengths approach, and we want to provide developers or system manufacturers all the components, diode laser components, to make the best-in-class uh, treatment devices, and also in research to develop new tools, enabling novel instruments and sensors. We've heard that biopsy or UCT or any kind of sensors or structured illumination, it's very important to, to see whether these treatment is successful or not. Here is a range of about 20 applications which can be covered today with our lasers in, in different instruments. So what is very well known maybe is body shaving that works at 1064. So it, it just burns the fat and has some effect on body shaving. Then we have, of course, these very cool vein treatment. In old times, it was um, just a surgery and you just remove the veins from the body and now you can uh, use only glass fiber and um, <clears throat> uh, treat them only with a laser and the patient can go home within, I think, hours. Of course, very important is not very well understood as well as pain therapy. It works with lasers somehow. It's, it works, but it's not really good understood. It has some effect on nerve stimulation, uh, mostly, and 
people use 808 or 96 or 1064 horology where heart is used also um, with 1940 because 1940 has a very high um, absorption and it used as a cutting system. Of course, general surgery uses 1470 and 1940, all the mixture between ablation and coagulation. But this is something which we want to um, develop with the um, medical people together. Yeah, that's the mission. So we're looking for always for collaboration because these applications are so wide and it's very hard to understand. Um, and uh, people have to communicate to get a better result. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a great presentation that is, is full of potential room for interaction. So first you're gonna get the epic question. What can you do for them? What can they do for you? Yes, yeah, so as I already said, so we, we're looking for um, collaboration with applications with clinical people or um, um, system integrators which have different questions from the application, different needs in terms of wavelengths or sensors. For example, the tattoo removal, which you heard uh, in the beginning with 1064 pulse lasers, so looking for something um, to detect the skin type or the, the ink type. So I think because we have some cooperation with the uh, uh, Institute and all structured light can be can done this job, just illuminate this and analyze the face and of the back coming lights. And you can see absorption of these uh, tissue and maybe able to understand what kind of um, tissue is there. And also very important is to, to have a good understanding of, of the different effects on, of wavelengths. So we, we are definitely like to work and looking for uh, collaboration with clinical people and uh, um, system integrators which have a good um, good knowledge of the application field because Lumix is a dial laser component manufacturer and we don't make systems, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things, you know, I'm a huge fan of, of laser diodes. One of the things that I'm seeing in the field of medical industry is that as we are going to many different applications, the needs for higher volume manufacturing are there needed. Uh, when it comes to the packaging of the laser of your laser diodes, how are you addressing this particular supply chain? Is it interesting for you to connect with companies who can help you with the volume production of laser diodes? So as I said in the beginning, so the, we are a diamond manufacturer, but the models are also manufactured here. So there's actually no need. Of course, we are looking for system integrators. Uh, I think the, the big potential in the medical field is, as we also saw, biopsy and integration, not only of sources, but some kind of um, sensors, right, to detect um, whether the treatment is successful or not. So we are not looking for packaging facilities. So, so we, we go to the to the laser integrators, which we are going to go. Uh, when I organized, when I announced the meeting on medical lasers, the first request I got was from FinTech, and um, I got uh, a message saying we are really doing a big thing on laser diodes packaging. I would like, I know you're not looking for that, Nils, but I want you to meet uh, my very good friend Ralph from FinTech. Ralph, why did you join a meeting on medical lasers? And what is FinTech? Um... Yeah, the first question uh, why we, we joined this meeting was because we have a strong base of customers in that area. And that's why I have a, one example that I would like to show you in my presentation. So shall I start to share it? Not yet, not yet. We had a discussion. I just wanted you to get to know each other, but uh, we will come back to you. Uh, when it, uh, I have a question from Art Photonics from Slava. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, nice to see Nils, you know, our neighbor, uh, uh, because we are neighbors in Adlershof and it will be good to meet, you know, so uh, now limits are a bit waived, you know, so schools and kindergarten are open, then I think so for laser companies and fiber optic companies, it's much more easy to meet, you know, and discuss not only through the screen. Anyway, um, just one question concerning the, how to say, size and expectations from the medical laser market. Uh, delicate question, but do you really feel that this niche, this segment of uh, your sales, is it fast growing or it's more or less steady? Because my impression is that it's a good piece of market 
but there you should really be involved, I should say, with disposable products. Maybe then, you know, it will be great, you know, but if you do very good systems, you know, and customer use it forever, then, you know, you have a limited number of customers. Uh, so um, question, do you, are you optimistic with the fast growing medical laser market or it's just, I don't know, 10% of your business? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. So it's much more than 10% of the business, more than half of the business. Um, of course, you, what you say is if the laser doesn't die, it's always stable and have no maintenance. Um, this is true and that's what customer wants. But uh, our customers, they develop always new applications and the laser, even the medical, is much younger than, for example, an ambassador applications. And you see always with new wavelengths, new sensors, new energies, uh, new combinations, so new, new technology, you inspire your customers with more new applications. So we are we are living for on the product side of the of the systems and they are between they are three and up to 10 years. And then also our customers have to develop something new. And because that's laser and laser is very, very new. So if you look at what if you look at the history of medical, so you have thousand years more than 2,000 years only is a scalpel and just that's it. And lasers are within the market for 10 or 30 years in the laser medical field. So I expect the yeah. growth and the growth of course is you can read it. So it's about 10% in this field. So it's, it's, I think it's very good, but we have to work together because the thing is very complicated and we are no clinical people. So we have no real idea what happens. We, we depend on them, on the clinical people. That's true. Uh, uh, um, I, I agree and it's a really good answer because, you know, I'm happy to have you with enthusiasm in laser medicine because I really spent, how to say, more than 30 years in laser medicine and the very first diet laser medical. I was behind its development from company Ceramoptech, if you know, the very first Ceralas, which appeared on the market, you know, in something like 92, 95, you know, so. But uh, I agree with you that in general, there are more and more uh, options uh, coming. And we would like to offer not only, let's say, to try our fiber optic delivery, but also to look for this kind of synergy between sensing and laser power delivery. Because for example, we can manage that through the same cable, it can be temperature monitoring in non-contact mode. Then laser application uh, can be how to say controlled in real time uh, for the temperature of the process, which is selected by the doctor like optimal. Coagulation, 60 degrees. Welding of vessels, uh, let's say 45 degrees plus minus one degree. So to stabilize temperature in non-contact mode in the point of illumination, something like that. And being B2B partner, because we also provide components like you. So same time, if you shall provide some kind of subsystem, uh, then, you know, I think system integrators, which will put them together, I don't know. Let, let, let's get me now, bring to the table a system integrator. I have a very good friend here, Dirk Deman from AAE. Dirk, how are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Happy to be here again. Thank it's you. good to see you. Good to see you smiling. Uh, yeah, what of kind course. of cooperations can you do with companies like Lumix, Letar Photonics? They are looking for a manufacturing partner, a system integrator. What's, what is AAE in this business? Well, the funny thing is we, we, we are currently working for uh, almost a name partner because we, we uh, have quite an extensive relationship with Luminix. It's only with an extra K at the end. And uh, we help them with developing and they, they thought of a system and we help them with uh, uh, making it uh, market ready. And uh, we can do that uh, for a variety of uh, 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 smart people who think about a system and want to get it market ready. We can help them uh, scaling up. So uh, uh, if we can do anything for you guys, uh, we would love to uh, help you out and have a chat with us. In the, in the field of the medical business, uh, AAE is really the interface between the, the medical workstation manufacturers and the companies making technology that can satisfy this market. So can we use AAE as the entry point? Can I introduce you to companies that are looking, are looking to enter this market and they have great technology? Is that how we can position you in Epic? Yeah, the, 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 the critical part is there when you're talking about medical, you have also different levels of certifications, 
and ISO norms that you need to uh, 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 go cooperate with. And we uh, uh, have uh, a lot of manufacturing knowledge, but on the ISO uh, levels and, 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 and the norms that we're talking about in that industry, uh, uh, we have to uh, cooperate with uh, the end user or the, the, the company that thought about the solution. So that's, that's very critical that you have a, 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 a good diversity in there, or how do you say it, a, 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 an agreement on the level of responsibility. That's very critical. Fantastic. And we also have to say that whenever you're looking for the clinical trials or uh, developing a market, uh, market de uh, medical device, right now the Netherlands is positioning themselves as the place for pilot production. Thanks to Philips Research Centers and Anthony Valum Hospital, we have a Absolutely. pilot line for manufacturing medical devices. We're meeting in December, second week of December, at uh, Philips to talk about medical device manufacturing. And with this, we go to Berlin and we go to FinTech. Thank you, Ralph, for being with us. The floor and the attention of everyone is here. Yes, hello uh, to everybody. Uh, let's see, I share my screen. Share. So I hope you can see it. Um, yes, thanks uh, to APIC to um, giving us a possibility to present the company today and what we do in the medical laser market. Um, greetings to my Berlin uh, yeah, friends here. Uh, Lumix is just really on the other side of the street. So actually this morning uh, we've met in the train um, briefly. And um, yeah, I would like to say something about, oh. How do I go to the next slide? Try the space bar, normally works. Ah, okay. Thanks a lot. You know my computer better than I. <laughs> so uh, I would like to say something about what we do. Um, and that is we make uh, equipment, we make machines, and these machines do um, chip bonding, die bonding, flip chip bonding. And we have two focuses. One focus is um, that we are very flexible. So our machines can execute almost any chip bonding technology. And the second uh, focus that we have is accuracy. Um, we have a portfolio of machines that the most of them can place chips within uh, sub-micrometer accuracy. And that's why they are ideally to be used uh, in the photonic industry. Uh, we do manual machines or fully manual machines, which are, of course, mostly used for R&D purposes. But we also do fully automated machine on the other side of our portfolio that are used for very complex tasks or even for uh, high volume production. Um, the, in the field of the lasers, we are, have a strong competence of packaging laser diodes. Um, that's also, for example, why uh, Lumix is uh, one of a good partner of us, uh, because they do exactly that. Um, we can do that for uh, single emitters. We uh, do that very often for laser bars. Uh, we can uh, solder such uh, components on heat sinks directly or on submounts. We also can do um, laser stacks, like you see in this slide on the bottom right side. Um, and we usually do that, uh, let's say, in the conventional mode with a heating plate um, and a small chamber or a small enclosure that we flush with nitrogen or forming gas. Uh, if you need some more power, we can also do that with formic acid, for instance, uh, for indium bonding. Um, yeah, we reach very high accuracies. We reach uh, almost void-free solar gaps and uh, superior wetting. And that is why we have about, I just counted it uh, um, for the preparation of this meeting, about 250 installations worldwide in the past 25 years for, for such applications. 
Um, and in particular for um, for medical application, I did not choose uh, an application from Lumix. Um, Kirstetter, next time we just um, align ourselves better than, <laughs> than this time, then I can choose something from you. Uh, but very interesting is uh, production of these QCW um, stacks, which uh, consist of so-called sandwiches, which is a submount and a laser and another submount, and they are uh, vertically soldered onto a heatsink. Um, our customers uh, stack up to 40, uh, 24 laser diodes and go uh, above two kilowatts of output power. And of course, we just do the, uh, the equipment. So our customers do not tell us everything. But uh, what I could find out is that these um, modules go into, um, um, into applications for a tattoo removal, which uh, has been uh, a topic of today, but also for hair removals and an eye correction and so on. Uh, as I said, we have uh, machines in volume production that are mostly uh, femtos, femto twos, and uh, asking what the, let's say, the mean accuracy is, which we reach under um, yeah, almost 24-7 um, production conditions. And I got the feedback that a bit depending on the, on the quality of the material, we reach about two micrometer accuracy. So um, yeah, one of the biggest question uh, of this online meetings is of course, what can we do for you? What can you do for us? Um, what can we do for you is of course clear. Uh, we are a machine manufacturer. So that is what we would like to offer also today is if you need uh, production processes or production equipment, or let's say any kind of equipment that will help you to package your laser diodes then please get in contact with us. Uh, if you need some uh, support in your uh, processes, if you want just a simple demonstration or try out things, then of course, also get in contact with us. We have uh, demo labs in the US, here in Berlin and also um, in Asia. Uh, and so my colleagues and, and would be happy to support you. And what can you do for us is also important for us uh, because we see uh, yeah, let's say we see the world only through the eyes of our customers. So if you have uh, new ideas, if you have new um, technologies that you want to try out, that you find interesting, please get in contact with us and um, tell us about it, ask questions so that we can start uh, to work on that on an early phase and not be behind your technology roadmap. Uh, last but not least, yeah, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, you find my telephone number on the bottom left side of this uh, slide and um, the page that we made for this online meeting on the bottom right side, just follow the link. And yeah, I'm happy to see you again. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Ralph, for your contribution and even a page of our meeting. Wow, <laughs> that's, really, <laughs> that's really good. So you advertise each other and collaborations uh, through us. So very good. And um, yeah, next, next time you can put the slide with Lumix uh, integration, but the Enoptic <laughs> is also an Epic member. So you didn't do so bad. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, don't uh, worry. The, and these are not the only two of our customers, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, I imagine. Very that, valuable that, uh, ones, but not not. not not the two only ones. <laughs> very good, very good. So yeah, we heard what the, what the Ralph is proposing. So of course, packaging is, uh, is one strength of, of fine tech. So really, really a, a major one. So if you have some questions here or some comments to, to Ralph. Yes, Zlava, please. Uh, great uh, presentation. And um, it's like a concept you presented. So to develop one source, which can be, let's say, from tens of watt up to kilowatt or more. Uh, question, uh, do you have customers which uh, are interested not only, let's say, in very powerful diet laser module, but really we have a great project in the past when 10,000 diet laser modules were united by fiber optic bundle in 10,000 fiber bundle. Uh, for 200 kilowatt output. So it's a rare project. Uh, 
it's uh, not uh, usual, I should say. But um, nevertheless, customer was hungry and said, guys, it's, not, it's nice, but I need another 150 kilowatts. So um, question, uh, if, for example, there are any applications when the beam quality is not extremely important, when you really must focus it in extremely small spot, uh, get megawatt per square millimeter, blah, blah, blah. Question, there are sometimes pumping ideas uh, like DPSS or what else, when the um, pumping must be distributed in space, then fiber optic bundle, which is flexible and can be managed in any geometry, can really help to unite power, to summarize power from same type diet laser modules, or it can be even different wavelengths if needed. You know, so maybe there are some medical applications when it's a double wavelength or multi wavelength lasers, but I'm really interested, you know, if there are any cases in your past. Um, uh, to be honest, not not just to mislead you, we have not developed uh, the the light source. So that is a development of our customers. What we have developed are the production processes. So ah, there has okay. been a, a, a cooperation, and that is uh, that is also more or less a question to your uh, the answer to your question. Um, so all these product development or application development come from our customers and uh, we are involved in the process or let's say in the in the, in the production process development okay. yeah? and not in the product itself. So it's more questions to Lumix. To Nils. Yes, that's yeah. what I wanted to mention actually. <laughs> okay, yeah. We'll work on it, but maybe you will be needed when we shall really find a customer for a thousand modules in one box, you know. And yes, and then uh, if you have somebody like this, then we would be the one to prepare the equipment okay. for it, yes. Great. Thank you. <laughs> very good, very good. So talking about integration, maybe in any way expertise in, in optical devices, we maybe go to IX Blue Photonics. So Nicholas is, is here in the, in the room and maybe you can take the opportunity to introduce yourself. Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity. So I'm from the specialty fiber division. So we produce uh, optical fiber, either passive or uh, doped fibers that can be uh, incorporated, uh, of course, in uh, fiber lasers. So for, uh, in particular, uh, medical application. So we have, a, um, I would say, a standard catalog, but we also uh, are able to make uh, some uh, customized uh, optical fiber, so do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Very good. So you put the everything on your plate. So <laughs> thank you very much for the introduction. And now we maybe go on with the agenda. So Slava, I give you back the microphone because I guess it's your turn. <laughs> we, I wait a second now. Uh, very good. So you can roll. <laughs> And okay, you hear me? Loud and clear. Um, okay, so um, we are fiber optic guys for uh, more than 20 years. We started in 98 in Adlershof in Berlin. And we have uh, in-house production of uh, unique fibers for mid-infrared, but we also do uh, a lot of assemblies of different cables for different lasers from eczema to CO2. So, um, in general, um, how to change slides. Okay, so uh, you can see that we really have almost all type of fibers needed for flexible delivery from UV silica, which is good for uh, 353 laser or eczema laser up to near infrared, uh, which includes up to two microns. And we have also fiber optic delivery for mid infrared. So, and this fiber we produce in-house. So this unique mid-infrared fiber, chalcogenite close the gap between uh, pure fiber and silica because it's the best for transmission in the range from one to six microns. Um, uh, we also try to help uh, to laser manufacturers in efficient coupling. If, for example, it's a diet laser, then sometimes this kind of profile or structure of the core is more 
efficient for efficient coupling uh, between the laser and fiber to uh, save, let's say, high intensity. Mm -hmm. And here you see two pictures. So one picture is done simply with halogen lamp and with a um, laser beam. And the difference between them is that we use um, sometimes metal coated fiber, silica fiber with a aluminum or copper alloy jacket. And in result, you see that we can really read off uh, wings which are going through the cladding. So this is wings um, in the cladding. And when we use metal, metal simply um, absorbs uh, all cladding modes and we have more or less clear uh, kind of, let's say, top hat or good intensity uh, profile. Can be shared, can be also square shaped, then you know you have homogeneous distribution of intensity. Uh, what is important uh, is a um, way how to um, make a mod stripping. So one of the classic application <clears throat> or uh, solution is mod stripper. You see one of the example here, it's with a laser at 147 microns. And mod stripper is relatively high, let's say heated in result of, let's say a lot of cladding modes absorbed uh, over here. It's uh, like 65 up to 70 degree Celsius. Uh, when we use another method, it's like a double clad fiber, you know, with a good uh, coating, a proper coating, then you see that uh, temperature is relatively low at the input uh, of the same power, same wavelengths, but you can see even the hand, you know, so it's the same 36 degrees, almost a bit higher, maybe 40, 45. So that's why efficient uh, mod stripping is also one of the, uh, how to say, features we can uh, manage. Uh, for the broad variety of different med, uh, medical lasers uh, from, uh, let's say, eczema lasers somewhere here, and they are even not shown here, up to CO2 at different wavelengths, 9.3 unusual, 10.6 very known, one of the oldest laser holes. There is one uh, relatively unknown laser, uh, which is carbon monoxide. Now it's produced by coherent and it combines very interesting features. It's a, a good transmission and good absorption together. So uh, absorption can be similar or equal to 10.6. Same time, it goes deeper for uh, better coagulation or welding purposes. So uh, example from UV side is on this slide. And uh, we were supplying for more than five years, almost six years to company Eximo very special catheters to remove plaques from the arteries. And uh, when uh, I just mentioned this very old publication from 86, we did it in Soviet Union in Moscow. Uh, it's now um, 34 uh, years ago. We already did uh, similar catheters, which simply remove plaques uh, for from 20 centimeter complete occlusion to recanalize it. But this idea from eczema was really well um, enhanced. You know, it's not eczema, which is a bit tricky laser. It's a 355 nanometer short pulse uh, neodymium yak, triple uh, third harmonic. And in result with double or triple uh, rings of the fibers, you can really clean arteries really well. So uh, you will not damage the walls of arteries and same time, you can recanalize them, you know, for uh, really excellent results. You can see, for example, over here, uh, patient before operation, so no blood flow through the artery. And after the treatment with this kind of, let's say, aterectomy uh, catheter, it's really full uh, flow of blood through the vessel. Here it's another case, uh, it was shorter, it was only six centimeter occlusion, but it was calcified, it's like a stone. But nevertheless, with this wavelength, it's possible to really to recanalize it. And after balloon angioplasty, you can really restore uh, almost full uh, blood flow through this artery. So we are looking for the uh, another uh, laser manufacturers, medical laser manufacturers in this field, just because of very simple reason. 
our uh, partner in Israel was acquired by a big company in America. And this company decided to produce, to assemble the same catheters in America. So unfortunately we lost, we lose this kind of, let's say partner, but I'm sure that there are more than one manufacturer who really helps passion to uh, do one of the, to, to solve one of the biggest problem, you know, plug connectors. Even right now, if you knew that COVID, uh, let's say, um, uh, problem through the world pandemic, the real damage uh, comes, you know, from arteries. It doesn't come from virus. It comes from the uh, cytokine storm. And then, you know, when the arteries are blocked in lungs, then patient will die. So that's why if there is a method, you know, how to keep arteries working, then it will be much, much less uh, lethal cases. So uh, one more horse in our, <clears throat> how to say, uh, production is hollow wave guides. So you can see here attenuation for polycrystalline fibers, which are substantially uh, below compared to hollow wave guides. And hollow wave guides is simple capillary with a silver and silver iodide mirror inside. And uh, it can be adjusted where this hollow wave guide is transparent. Advantage that hollow wave guide has no frenal reflection. It's hollow, it's air, uh, but there are some problems when you bend hollow wave guide. When you bend it, transmission can drop relatively fast. In straight position, it will transmit, let's say, more than 85%. As soon as it's bended, even for uh, only 10 centimeters, then you will see a substantial drop. Uh, polycrystalline fibers can work even for two centimeter radius of bending, saving the beam quality more or less in difference with the hollow waveguides. But nevertheless, each, uh, let's say, type of flexible cable has pro and contra. So that's why we have also hollow waveguides, which can be adjusted for transmission of carbon monoxide laser or for example, commercial product from Polymicro is available for years for CO2 laser and maybe for Airbium. Um, here you see just an example. We show it at laser uh, photonics in München last summer, first show. It's a carbon monoxide laser, 40 watts, and this is CO2 laser with flexible delivery, in this case, based on polycrystalline fiber. And we also show uh, recently the very first, it was at Photonics West uh, in January. It's a very first quantum cascade laser with seven quantum cascade lasers, all of them united by infrared fibers in bundle and then into one fiber. And this fiber is used for the diagnostics of uh, catrial H disease in the knee of the patient. And this is for mid infrared as well. So uh, there are advantages of carbon monoxide laser, which I will not discuss in details because of, let's say, uh, restricted time. Uh, but later on, if there is an interest from laser manufacturers, we already teaming with um, coherent. We are looking for the best application of um, carbon monoxide laser in comparison with CO2 laser because uh, penetration is not as deep uh, for CO laser as for CO2, but coagulation zone is bigger. And it means if you will use it for parenchymatosis organs like liver, kidney, lungs, then it will be much better hemostasis, um, hemostasis and aerostasis for, to prevent any kind of bleeding. So, and carbon monoxide laser is really very unusual. It's multivalence laser from, let's say, 5.3 up to six microns. And that's why it's an interesting cocktail of the laser, which provides very good um, coagulation like neodymium yak or second or, uh, or at the same time, uh, good uh, absorption as well. So we are open for collaboration with laser companies. So that's why now I hopefully within my time limit and thanks for your attention. Thank you very, very much, Slava. You are one of the rock stars in EPIC. Every time that we organize something on medical, you always collaborate with many people and it's 
amazing. Some people really should be paid to be members, and you are one of them. You are really helping us so much in the association. I'm going to introduce you to one of your potential partners here. One uh, relatively new EPIC member is Senko. And Senko, when I organized this meeting on medical laser, they said, we want to be there because we really think we can help the companies in this segment. Tiger, how are you today? Hi, Jose. I'm doing good. Thank you. Beautiful red bridge in San Francisco behind you. How can you help Art Photonics and other companies in this sure. sector? Sure. First of all, I'm not in San Francisco. I'm in Boston, so um, opposite side anyway. Um, so Sen Senko is uh, um, providing fiber optic connectors uh, solutions. And I think we are famous for telecommunication, wireless and data com mainly, but we supply connectors for medical and also laser applications as well. And the, lately we are supplying more for the sensor applications when it comes to medical. However, we do have some connectors uh, optimized for uh, hyper laser for industrial uh, laser applications. But the, uh, it was very interesting to hear about the quantum, uh, use of quantum probably to sense, I couldn't catch up the uh, uh, application, but the, uh, we, we do also have some kind of connectors or terminated fibers, uh, great for quantum uh, photon detecting portion or the very low loss type of connections. Also, um, it was very interesting to hear about the holy fiber uh, which I believe a uh, fairly different uh, uh, structure, but the, um, I, I think holy fiber is used for photon detection as well uh, using quantum technology. So um, uh, I think we, we can probably support in terms of the connector company point of view, if you seek any customization or need for any uh, help to align the fibers or laser sources. And the, uh, when it comes to fibers, I, I think OFS is also talking later, so. I, I, Indeed. I think, yeah. Arthotonics is one of the few companies that we have in the world in micro mid infrared fibers. Uh, do you see challenges, Slava, on the on the connectors for this wavelength range? We are, of course, interested in partnership because we are not manufacturing connectors ourselves. We buy them. So that's why, in general, some of them are unusual. They are based on titanium. Some of them must really withstand to the power up to one kilowatt. So that's why it's a demand on uh, high uh, heat dissipation. So uh, there are some kind of, let's say, technical questions we are happy to discuss directly with Tiger and uh, find mutual benefit from it. Fantastic, because Thank you me. will be introduced afterwards. And now it's one of my favorite parts. Oh, no, sorry. First, Sergey has a question. Uh, Slava, well, thank you for your presentation. I, yes, I think I saw a couple of more from you. I have a question. Um, we uh, build um, OAM solutions for medical anesthetics where they use a second harmonic, mm -hmm. um, uh, nanosecond, switch laser mm -hmm. um and, and 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 what is the highest power can you deliver through the fiber uh it's a very good question but it's always to distinguish continuous way or pulse power pulsed uh we speak about 10 nanoseconds six to ten nanoseconds uh and uh customer wants 10 nanoseconds at the distal end of the fiber correct yeah, well, yes, the usual way to deliver uh, a beam or laser from uh, a laser module to a skin for mm -hmm. nanosecond cool switch high power pulse is a mirror. So yeah. they use articulated arm. Because fiber will elongate it, you know, during the propagation. So that's why to keep the pulse duration not longer, uh, I think the best solution will be this kind of special um, okay, okay, either photonics uh, crystal fibers or let's say so called anti resonant uh, mm -hmm. revolver fibers, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so what's, what's the highest power they can withstand? Uh, in, about nanosecond mentions in general, you know, but I think so in general, it can be uh, for 10 nanoseconds. It's not everything in my um, head, you know. I can look and send you more detailed, uh, more. Uh, honest answer because otherwise it will be a fantasies. Uh, it can be uh, uh, jewels or more, but uh, really it depends also on the profile of the beam because normally uh, laser induced damage happens at the front, uh, mm. not uh, during the 
smooth changes of the pulse duration. Okay, this is uh, this is a top flat or or, or Gaussian type. Uh, Gaussian type will be more how to say smooth uh, for the transportation because when you have a very sharp uh, front of the pulse, it's uh -huh. a normal uh, how to say tsunami. You know, it's like a shock uh, Over for the overload. Okay. okay. So yeah. one joule would be something that more or less uh, maybe more maybe more sergey i i really would like to reserve time you know to okay. uh, for our direct communication because i should look through uh my good friend alzheimer you know is too often in my room you know so oh come on <laughs> <laughs> let's let's try to have a nice very nice tv now i'm gonna go back to irisom uh, william yeah. uh, i would like to understand a little bit the business of beam shaping. So you 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 showed today a few use cases in the tattoo removal, and they were beautiful, and I love the pictures. Uh, could you share with companies like FISBA or like Altecna or like Aspherikon, what is the ideal beam shape? Are you looking for a square beam shapes? Yeah, sure. So uh, uh, there is different ways to, uh, to 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 have the uh, the interaction between the, the beam and the and the skin. Uh, so uh, we uh, we heard some uh, some ideas like uh, to use uh, scanners or stuff like that. It's um, so what we understood today is uh, there is a, a link uh, between the spot size, the, uh, the 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 tattoo removal process for sure, and the pain. Uh, so it's a, it's a trade off on all that stuff, uh, and uh, for sure uh, square. Uh, shapes with a top hat profile is very interesting um, and so uh, that's that's one of my of my question um, the the fiber you you the, the kind of fiber you are you are providing with a, a square shape is it um, uh, usable at with the same fiber at one micron and 532 nanometers is it working with the same fiber or yeah, I think I don't see big difference, you know, in this case, because uh, laser induced damage uh, for both wavelengths is more or less similar. If you go to, let's say, longer wavelengths and you are, let's say, uh, with a wavelength longer than two microns, mm -hmm. then it can be some kind of problems. Uh, but uh, for green laser or 106, I don't see big difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but imagine that we had uh, the we had Santa Claus here with the white beard, and he would tell me, uh, "I want to understand what Irisom wants in terms of beam shape." You're saying that you're looking for a square. That's we can provide that. But is there anything beyond? Are you looking for transforming a Gaussian into a square? Are you looking for a top hat inverted front and uh, up and down? What is uh, the kind of thing I can tell my my very good friend Sabrina from Aspherikon because she's writing notes on how to satisfy your demand. Mm -hmm. So um, just to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to clarify, um, today we are, in our system, we are, we are using uh, multimode fibers, which, uh, which are uh, a lot of uh, modes and the, uh, the, the modal content at the, uh, at the output of the fiber and on the skin is not uh, um, really uh, flat, I would say. Uh, even it's a, it's a large core fiber. Uh, there is a, a speckle at the output, uh, and we uh, we are also considering to uh, to to have uh, a larger spot with uh, um, I would say a flat top profile with uh, uh, the, the 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 smallest speckle uh, as we we can we can have, um, and so that's why on the on the previous uh, talk. Uh, on the uh, the beam shaping, uh, I also ask for um, optics to uh, to be able to to shape the uh, the, the 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 beam profile directly into the uh, the end piece. In fact, you don't know what you just did. Be prepared because we're going to make a lot of introductions. Uh, what is the typical peak power that you that you use for tattoo removal? Uh, in uh, in our case, uh, we are using about uh, uh, I would say 100 kilowatts. Uh, peak power because it's uh, it's uh, picosecond pulses, uh, 20 picosecond pulses. Um, so yeah, it's in that range at one micron at more uh, five, 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 uh, 50 kilowatts uh, in the green at 532 nanometers. Slava. 
very shortly, you know, William, I think there is a very simple uh, way how to make a more homogeneous sport. Uh, you should use not a round uh, core. If you will use, for example, simply square core fiber, mm -hmm. then it will be a much better, let's say, um, uh, homogeneous, more, much more homogeneous uh, profile because you will kill more or less multi-mode interaction uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it will be good mod mixer. So mm -hmm. yeah, fiber is more expensive, but in general, you know, the benefit uh, at the patient, it will be really how to say. Uh, it's difficult to make, let's say, on the skin, something from the, uh, let's say, spots. Mm -hmm. But if you will have a square shape, you know, you can make a simple puzzle. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested from a company that we have in Epic, uh, Optoman, developing IBS coatings and optics. Uh, Remigidius, thank you very much for joining the meeting today. How do you see this market for you, especially the demands that uh, William just shared from Arizona? Um, we are actually looking into medical market uh, quite actively recently. So this is, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, IBS as a, as a technology, uh, as well as other sputtering technologies give an advantage of uh, coating density which means an uh, environmental stability, uh, which is kind of important, you know, to make your medical systems very stable uh, in the long run. You don't want to uh, ship back your systems and et cetera uh, for, a, for a service. Uh, so we are actually looking mainly into two microns and three microns as uh, wavelengths all around that. Uh, that gives a, a huge advantage. I mean, IBS coatings. And as for other wavelengths, as one micron and 532, so as will have mentioned, uh, they have uh, 100 kilowatts in, in square centimeter. So we can assure such kind of thresholds with high confidence uh, because, uh, so as for example, we have uh, results of like one joule and above that uh, as a damage threshold at one picosecond. So and 10, 10, 30 nanometers. So that gives a lot of margin actually for high power um, medical is a systems and not only medical is a systems. Um, I think it's, it's uh, great to have the whole supply chain here because I was uh, writing down, William, you were making quite a lot of emphasis that you are working with multi-mode fibers. Uh, I would like to ask one of the companies that we've been Epic on, been shaping using multi-mode fibers, uh, Aspericon. Sabrina, are you, are you here from the beautiful city Jena? The yes, I am. Can you hear Europe. me? I, I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> How can you help companies like right. Arizona on this? Um, I have one question to, to both, to Irisom and Art Photonics. When they use um, whatever they have, the light out of their lasers and their fibers, how do they really bring it to the skin? Is there any other optics related at the end of that fiber or is it directly going out from the fiber they are using to the skin? So uh, in, in our system, we are directly using uh, uh, the fiber there? to, to, to collimate the, the, the beam in our system, Aterisium, directly in the NPS. Um, yeah, just to add, of course, uh, if you would like to have a distinct shape on the skin for the beam, and uh, from the fiber, you always have a divergent beam. That's why you should really do something by optics to make it refocused or collimated or what else. So that's why there are some applications, but normally not on the skin, when it's direct contact of the fiber with the tissue, but tissue in result silica fiber can be, how to say, coated by the uh, sticky uh, product of, let's say, coagulation. And the result, it starts to work like a, how to say, hot spot. It's just piece of carbon which moves uh, through the tissue because it's really hot, thanks to laser, you know, but then it's another application. Today we welcome for the first ever time our friend Paola from Liacon. Welcome to the Epic Network. I guess you have a question. Thank you. So uh, it's not a real question. I think that maybe we can help uh, uh, William uh, with his uh, beam shaping problems and then pieces because that we are quite experts in uh, beam shaping systems of fiber couple uh, modules or, or uh, laser beams, generally speaking, and also in designing of end pieces and delivery systems in general. So maybe we can have a discussion 
even after this meeting. <laughs> you, you already uh, started a topic and you know the philosophy. <laughs> Uh, we yes. move ahead with the Thank program. You. The next presentation is from OFS. Thank you very much for joining us today. Jeff, the floor and the attention of everyone is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for allowing me to present here today. Um, hopefully everybody can see my slides. Um, so today I'd like to present some of the work that we're doing at OFS on our fiber laser technologies. Um, so at OFS, let's see here. Uh, for those of you who don't know OFS, we uh, trace our heritage all the way back to Alexander Graham Bell. In around 2001, we were spun off from, uh, from Bell Labs and Lucent uh, and, uh, to, to become OFS. Uh, we do pretty much everything in fiber from optical, optical fiber to cables, components, um, all the way up to full laser assemblies, which is what I'd like to talk about today. Uh, but just briefly mention that in terms of optical components, we also make assemblies such as Grenlin's assemblies, which are designed for medical applications as well. But today I'd like to focus on our fiber laser components. So at OFS, uh, our primary work in fiber lasers has been done for kilowatt ytterbium fiber lasers for industrial performance. Uh, and I'd like to point out that OFS does not make turnkey laser systems. We actually make what we call an optical module. And that optical module includes all the fiber components and packaging for thermal management, but we don't add pump diodes or control electronics. And these are really designed for OEM applications for our customers to rapidly develop into novel laser solutions while taking advantage of the OFS expertise in fibers and fiber lasers. So in order to move into new wavelengths, we add on another module to our YB cavity, which is the cascaded Raman resonator. And that Raman resonator uses nonlinear frequency shifting to produce new wavelengths that can't be accessed through rare earth fiber dope technology. So we combine this YB cavity resonator, YB cavity and this Raman resonator into a Raman laser, which can now produce high power single mode, true single mode output with an operating wavelength anywhere from one micron to 1.8 microns. And these uh, fiber laser cavities, these Raman lasers have a wide range of applications that we're exploring. And one obviously that we're very interested in is using these for medical laser applications. So as an example of what we can do with these uh, Raman fiber lasers, here's one we uh, built recently that produces more than 100 watts at 1692 uh, nanometer wavelength. We've been hearing a lot of interest in 1692 recently for a wide variety of applications. And it turns out 1692 is actually very difficult uh, for either erbium, which it's too long for, or thulium, which it's too short for, but there are emerging applications here. Uh, so I, what I show here in the plot is two different outputs. One is where we use a conventional Raman fiber to produce the 1692 laser at very high power. And you can see, although we do get the 1692 nanometer light that we want, we also produce a lot of 1800 nanometer light, which we don't want. And this is where OFS's ability to design um, high performance fibers comes into play because we can make a Raman filter fiber which stops that Raman scattering at the wavelength that we're interested in. So our, our novel Raman filter fiber takes all of that power, 100 watts that we're interested in and puts it precisely at 1692 nanometer. So these lasers are nice because they can be pu pulsed very simply as well. So these are diode pumped, the YB cavity is diode pumped and simply by pulsing the drive current to the YB cavity, the Raman laser then becomes pumped. And if we, if we adjust the current appropriately, we can produce these nice square pulses that are free of relax and relaxation oscillations or overshoot. And we get a spectrum which is virtually identical to the to continuous wave op operation. And simply by adjusting the duty cycle of the drive current, we generate a wide range of pulses and pulse energies anywhere from the millijoule to the, to the joule level. Not everybody wants high power, so we offer also offer very small, uh, compact 
Raman lasers with the YB and the, and the CRR integrated into a single spool, which puts out around three to 10 watts of average power uh, for a wide range of applications from test and measurement, for example, or, or uh, telecom applications as well. So we've got this Raman laser. Now I'd like to shift gears a little bit and talk about another module that we've developed, which is a high performance erbium amplifier. And in this case, because we've got the Raman laser, instead of operating it at 1700 nanometers, we can operate it at 1480 nanometer and use this high power Raman fiber laser as a pump source for a high performance erbium amplifier. And in particular at OFS, we've been developing what we call a very large mode area fiber for uh, pulse amplification. In this case, it has a very large core diameter of around 50 microns. And with the high power Raman laser, we can get over 100 watts of average power from the erbium amplifier. And we can also make it polarization maintaining. So this combination of core pumping and a uh, very large mode area allows us to produce very high pulse energy amplification now in the erbium amplifier, but still remaining Still, still maintaining essentially diffraction limited fundamental mode output. Since this is an erbium amplifier, we can operate it over a wide range of uh, pulse properties, basically by tuning the seed laser that we put into it. So we've done experiments where we go from anywhere to femtoseconds to microseconds of pulse amplification, and we can generate up to millijoules of pulse energy for applications such as LIDAR. Uh, in this particular instance, what I'm showing here is soliton application, amplification in the VLMA erbium fiber. And because we have anomalous dispersion in this, we can generate these very nice solitons that are, have high polarization extinction ratio. And by adjusting the power, we can hit any wavelength from 15, 16 nanometers out to past two microns. In this particular instance, we tune the laser to operate again at 1700 nanometer and we can generate more than 20 nanojoule of pulse energy out in 100 femtosecond pulse with 200 kilowatts of peak power. And because these are solitons, we don't need any chirp compensation after the amplifier, after the, the fiber amplifier. So these are directly outputting bandwidth limited compressed pulses with very high pulse energy and very high pulse extinction ratio. So hopefully that gets a, gives you a flavor of some of the work that we're doing in medical lasers at OFS. So what we offer are these optical modules that allow for rapid prototyping of systems. We talked about Raman laser modules uh, for high power CW output, anywhere from one out possibly to two microns in wavelength. And specifically at 1.5 microns, we have this very large mode area fiber technology for very high pulse energies and very high peak powers. And um, what we're looking for are partners who have unique requirements for lasers in medical applications. And we'd like to understand what their needs are and specifically where they need high power wavelengths that, that's difficult to get with uh, other means. And we're also looking for lasers and system integrators who can benefit from these optical modules and then turn them into the turnkey systems that uh, OFS doesn't build. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeff, for your contribution. And uh, very much, very good. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So, um, William, maybe you, you want to directly um, make some comments on what the OFS is, is offering, because I, I think uh, it gave you a bit of a spectrum. He also was talking, for example, about um, uh, polarization uh, maintaining uh, systems. Is this something that actually for medical application is important or something that you want to comment on what Jeff told us? So I guess you're muted. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> very yeah. good. Um, so uh, thank you, Jeff. It's a, it's a very, very interesting talk. Uh, so it's a, um, uh, to to uh, to to just have a a, a, a comment on the uh, uh, so the, the main uh, thing that is is interesting for for us is the the uh, the amplifier uh, high power amplifier at uh, at 1.5 uh, micron so it's uh, it's it's uh, impressive um, and uh, that uh, that could uh, be uh, uh, 
have uh, some application uh, also in the in our field uh, in uh, aesthetic uh, application or touch removal or so on. Um, and we we are doing some uh, some stuff on that. Uh, and uh, so yes, it's uh, it's 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 a, it's a good point. Um, and uh, you're right, there is a, a lack of uh, of of amplifiers and. Uh, uh, and lasers in the, between the one micron window and 1.5 micron window, so uh, it's uh, it's also uh, it's also good uh, to to have some uh, some solution and uh, um, and even to uh, to get some uh, other visible wavelengths in this uh, in this window. It's uh, uh, thanks to second harmonic generation. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, interesting. Thank you very much. So we'd definitely like to talk to you uh, maybe further offline about your needs at the 1.5 micron wavelength. And you also raise a good point about the second harmonic generation because we've done work with the, specifically with the solitons as well to make tunable sources that then cover what is traditionally the Thai Sapphire wavelength, which can mm -hmm. then tune anywhere from say 750 to, to one micron but in an all fiber solution that comes with the inherent benefits of uh, that in terms of low cost of ownership and reliability and alignment free. Very good. So thanks a lot. There is already room uh, for the discussion. So William will have a long list of <laughs> connections after this meeting. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Then, of course, talking about lasers and laser integration, maybe it's time to give the mic to Francois from Amplitude. So it would be really interesting to know why you're here. So I know you're from the branch of medical applications. So you're really the very important and very uh, expert in, in a medical application from Amplitude side. So please, you can tell us something about you and Amplitude. Yes, actually, as you know, Amplitude is uh, uh, involved in uh, medical application, uh, mainly in ophthalmology. Uh, and uh, we are looking for over potential application in the future. Okay, so you know that then you cannot miss the ophthalmology epical and technology event. So keep it on in mind. Yes. Is there <laughs> if you found Definitely. it is all yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, this is yeah, this is our our core business, but we are also looking at uh, other potential opportunities, especially at this time where medical can be a, a great opportunity. And from what you heard so far, can you already say maybe a couple of words more? What is what really interests you the most? Or no, actually, it's quite difficult to say at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, there is there is many applications like X-rays, uh, imaging, uh, but uh, uh, we are still still investigating mainly to to check Very what good. would be what would be the next revolution in the future. Okay, then it's also good here to be a good listener. That's also yeah. what we... Thank you. <laughs> <you> can... <laughs> exactly. And exactly, you but want... we can... Yes. No, no, please. Yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, of, of course, we're a good listener, but we are also here to, to provide solution for, for some industries that would like to uh, enter into the ultra-fast uh, technology. Uh, we, we heard from uh, Erysium, for instance, that they are uh, working on the Pico, uh, Pico second range. Uh, we are mainly focusing on the Femto range, and we, we believe that the trend will be to uh, shorter pulse in the future with more and more application. And this is what we are looking for. Very good. So this is, was already very tailored. Thank you very much, Thank Francois, for, very much. for this comment. And also offline, of course, we can also yeah. put you in contact with uh, someone specifically and anybody who wants to talk to you. Of course, we have uh, the way to connect you with them. So now maybe we could uh, go on with the agenda and it would be the time for Laurinas from Altecna for his talk. And uh, so, Laurinas, Hello, are you ready to rock? Yes, yes there here. you are. <laughs> I'm ready and I'm sharing my screen. So, it is a great pleasure not only to be here, but also sponsor all these activities of Epics, which you are doing a great job in order to build a community here. Thank you, guys. So, today I'll have a very short presentation about Altecna and the basic research which we are doing related to medical industry. I'm pretty sure most of you already know Altecna as a company, but for ones who don't, there will be very short introductions. So Altecna Group is basically two companies. Altecna Coatings, dedicated professionals only for 
for the electric coating manufacturing process. Well, Altechna itself is a mother company which is responsible for all of our commercial activities. And not only developing of the mechanical assemblies and pieces, doing metrology services and many, many more things. So we are 24 years already in the laser market with hundreds of talented employees. And we are able to generate 12 million euros of revenue by shipping 23,000 or more different optical components and sub assemblies all around. The most important thing is that we are not only shipping the products, but big part of our products are going directly into laser systems. Our key customers are laser manufacturers and laser integrators. More than half of our optics shipped from Altecna are inside of the lasers, which are already in sort of industrial applications. And very important industry for us are medical as well, obviously. That's one of the reasons why I'm here today. So to start talking about optical components in the medical market is a great challenge because there is so many of different applications. The property of laser itself to generate specific wavelength and to pick the right medium for the lasing itself to address the right absorber for application is a critical thing in medical application. It makes it unique tool and very efficient starting from UV XMR lasers for ophthalmology applications, all the aesthetics which we talked about today with visible and uh, near infrared application going to surgery with uh, two microns as LISA laser today presented. So there is a bunch of different applications. And if you want to be a good component supplier, you need to be expert on every and each. And each laser, believe me, has its own challenges. Is it alexandrite milliseconds or two micron OIA? So recent developments at Deltecna is in the range of two microns. We do believe that two microns due to unique properties and technological capabilities of the companies are the great market in the medical industry. Working with water absorption lines in the tissues allows people to have a precision surgery the perfect control of coagulation zone. With optical component manufacturer here, with diet pump solid system faces many of different challenges. Recently, we started a project, maybe one and a half year ago, and we raised some challenges for ourselves. So making new generation laser means having small and smaller laser source doing the same job or generating even more power in quasi CV. CW or pulse regime, which means it faces more and more power. So the components for yesterday is not lo longer working too much. Basically, today we are addressing uh, application with working with water. So anything, any hydroxyl inside of the laser component are enemy for ourselves. So we need to make laser components from the glass, the bulk materials to the coating hydroxyl free and put the coating as dense as possible in order to not absorb any of environmental humidity and not to destroy any good things which we are making. Afterwards, Q micron is not visible. So high reflectors, mirrors, polarizing coatings, we will end up in more than 10 microns of very dense structures on the thin glass pieces. So in the end of the day, very dense and unique coating will generate some stress for your optics, which our engineers also needs to face it in order not to distort your perfect beam. So, and if you add up those seven, six challenges, which I made to industrial standards of medical market with precision process control and repeatability standards, it will take some time to develop something. So today the results will talk itself. We start with something from the left. This is a LIDT results for very good high reflector mirror at uh, two microns, which is made with amazing materials, high band gaps. Uh, it is pretty dense because it's ion assistant uh, deposition process, but still it ends up in four nanoseconds with seven joules per square centimeter. But in the right hand side, you will see our newly developed coatings which is basically our straight line, which says it's undamaged up to 25 joules per square centimeter under the same conditions. So guys, I started the project with quite a few challenges, 
And I ended the project only with one, which is directed to Epic members. Who of the laser manufacturers can destroy our optics? This is a question for you. I hope laser uh, measurement test services uh, from LIDAR is amazing. Team pretty soon will have a solution how to test unqualified new generation optical components for high power lasers at two microns. But today I really have a challenge for you. And continue on that, it's not only single product, single coating, single component. No, it's far away from being that. We developed technology which is scalable for anti-reflective coating on your polonium yak crystal, high reflectors for the resonator, polarizer coating, and even output coupling coatings. And we repeated it multiple times. On the right-hand side, you will see a LIDT summary, which is made from tens and tens of different coating runs. We started the R&D project in the bottom with seven joules, which was the, something what we had without any uh, additional work for almost 20 years. And we pretty soon within five, six coating runs, some five, six development process reached 20 joules. Within that, every and each coating, despite the fact what it is, polarizer, high reflector, it is being undamaged as much as laser power we do have. And all of these research and development projects are basically results of the people, not equipment. But equipment is a must. It's a necessity which we need to have in order to support industrial customers from the medical market. So for our case, our bread and butter is sputtering technologies. Is it IBS or magnetron sputtering in clean room environment and with all supporting equipment such as ultrasonic bath for the cleaning or real-time particle monitoring system. Only these uh, expensive things makes unique laser products. But to finalize, there is final slide, which I want to say thank you, the customers who are continuously pushing us to success. And it's the only reason why I'm here, because partnership, collaboration is the only way to develop new products, new markets, and new revenues for all of our companies. So that's it from Altecna now. Thank you very much, Laurina. So it is clear what people can do for you, which is to try to destroy your optics. Fantastic challenge. But uh, you are saying that you're looking for cooperation. So give me your Santa Claus Christmas list of potential partners. Who do you want to talk to and what about? Yeah, as you know, Altecna itself has uh, two companies. We are coating manufacturers, which does a lot of R&D work. So currently we are developing uh, quite a few projects but sooner or later projects are being gained and our capacity will be free. You know, we will have machine time, we will have people. The question is, what do market need for us to develop with metal oxide? Is it three micron? Is it something below? Is it hundreds of joules? Is it CW? That's the question for you guys. And of course, in all the terms, the customer, the partner, the integrator, the laser manufacturer is the one who will describe is the R&D work successful or not. Altecna has been quite uh, well positioned on developing uh, laser optics solutions, not just laser optics, but really understanding the market challenge and develop not only the optics, but the coating as well. When it comes to the medical segment, there is a company in Epic, Hoya, that is very well specialized in developing any kind of filter solution. I have Seiya here, and I think here there is an obvious, obvious win-to-win -win collaboration. Seiya, thank you very much for joining today. What do you think about the presentation from Altecna? Is there a room for cooperation here? Um, thank you for that, to introduce um, me. And uh, Rodio, thank you very much for the great presentation. It's quite interesting. And uh, yeah, as Jose introduced, um, we are the current filter supplier from the base material to the coating. You know, we, can, we provide also the coating materials. And recently we have also developed the uh, filters for the hair removal lasers. And we are also looking for uh, several suppliers in Europe. So mainly we are working on Asia branch and uh, our production is located in Japan and also China. So if we can, Collaborate. Maybe so we will ship to you several base materials, and you can quote it on it. 
So um, I will contact you right now. So <laughs> potential collaboration in the future. Good, of course, and that's what it's all about, Laurinas. When it comes to when it comes to identifying the the, the right filter solution, uh, do you have a supply chain ready for this? Are there challenges to uh, to provide the right filter on the top of the optics for different applications? Sure, you know you cannot be expert on everything. So we are limited on our capabilities at the one hand side, and we are limited by our network on the other hand side. So depending on the actual filter, what type of material it needs, we will be open for cooperation if it will go along to our optics. So we do have current suppliers, but we are also very open. Last year, I traveled around the world. Uh, now I cannot anymore, and it's frustrating. But everywhere I went, I saw companies interested in IBS or developing IBS. And then we have here Optoman and then WZW. And of course, Altecna also had a big investment on that uh, recently. Uh, on, the, on the IBS coatings market for medical, have you seen a boom, an explosion? Is that a market uptake on this? Yeah, this is true. You know, medical market itself seems to be pretty slow to implement research and development, but very fast to develop something. And those two micron is booming. Yes, we do see interest from our customers in medical market, which are basically driving all of our R&D efforts. We are not developing anything because we are interested in that. We are developing because customer needs that. Thank you very much once again for mentioning Lidaris, because if you're looking to test your optics or if you have suppliers in China or in the US and you want to compare performances, these guys are truly amazing. Laurinas, Acho, thank you very much for a great presentation. We're going to come back to you later with a final round of potential collaborations. But I want to move to the next speaker today. I want to go to one of my favorite, my favorite coating suppliers in Epic. I want to go to Optics Balsers. Thank you very much, Stefan, for being with us this beautiful afternoon and it's beautiful here in the Netherlands. The floor, the attention of everyone is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's the first time that I'm able uh, to join such kind of meeting. And I'm very happy to have the chance to present something. Um, I'm Stefan Gliesch and I'm with Optics Balsas. You've told these. Sorry, that's now it runs. Um, Optis Balsas is a coating company with a history of more than 70 years. And uh, actually, we have three different production sizes. The headquarters are in Liechtenstein. Uh, then uh, one special place in Jena, in this place I'm located. And in Penang, we have also a, a production site. And uh, we have uh, about 600 employees worldwide. And uh, we are on a large uh, range of market segments uh, in which we have our customers. And uh, to not waste so much time, I will not tell something about uh, the market segments only. Uh, then I will show some examples. Sorry, I was too fast. Some examples uh, for the uh, life science and industry range. Uh, and I will show some examples of filters, what we produce, uh, what we think that could be interesting for the uh, range of medical lasers, for the producers of lasers, and for the producers of uh, applications in which the medical lasers are in. Uh, one is for uh, a broadband dielectrical laser mirror. And uh, here we uh, have two general types. One is more for the uh, visible wavelength range and uh, covered uh, until uh, 1100 nanometers. And the other one goes up to uh, two microns. And the interesting stuff is here that uh, the reflectance is for both polarization stage states uh, higher than 99%. And uh, it is a pure dielectrical mirror that means uh, no uh, uh, metal layer is in. So that means you have a very low absorption and a high uh, damage threshold. Uh, then another example is uh, laser cavity mirrors. Uh, here an example for an output copper mirror. And our value proposition is here that we have a high uh, spectral performance. Uh, all our filters what we produced are customized. Also here, uh, this filter is customized for transmission for the outcoupling 
uh, output coupler mirror, uh, mirror uh, we have a very high reflectance uh, for the uh, other filter in the cavity. And uh, we have also designs, uh, they uh, are mode uh, hopping free and with the suppression of uh, sidelines. Uh, if you need the laser, then you have also uh, in a lot of cases the necessary to bring out the laser line of the other parts, what you like to see. So here is an example of a notch filter uh, for the very common laser line of uh, 533 nanometers, but uh, you can have also it for another laser line. And uh, our proposition is here that you have deep blocking levels, uh, very steep spectral edges, uh, edges, high stability. And as I told before, all parameters are customizable. And uh, if you do it with a notch filter, then uh, in some applications, for instance, uh, for eye surgery, you need also a filter with a, a color correction. And it's also a product from us. Uh, here an example also for the same wavelengths and uh, more or less the same uh, param parameters as before, also with deep blocking level. And uh, but here then with the color correction, that means you have here parts of the uh, laser area of, of the spectral area, which is blocked to uh, adjust the um, color point uh, to that range what the customer like. And if you do it with one notch filter range, you can do it also with more than one. Here's an example with a filter with three different notches and uh, more or less all parameters as before. And uh, what I have learned also, and I've forgotten to prepare, we also make uh, coatings on uh, the end surfaces of uh, fibers, if it's from interesting. And uh, yes, now I'm on the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for the attention. And uh, I've also listed here some uh, contact details, our general website, and also if you'd like to contact me directly. Yes, please do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan, for your talk. <laughs> Thank you very much, and also all your offer of uh, collaboration. So it's clear. So this you you focus your your presentation a bit on more on the medical application and what you think is that uh, the yes. medical uh, uh, medical application people let's say can can meet. So is there someone who wants to ask this question to to Stefan or to comment? For example, maybe I can ask Doug from Laser Centrum Manova. Do you, do you, I know you have so, you're really busy with the, um, also a medical application. Is it something that coatings or uh, something that the optics vultures offer could be useful for you? Or if there is something that you can focus on with them in, in collaborating with Stefan, for example? Yeah, sorry, we're also just busy taking notes. Um, <laughs> wow, actually, that's a good news. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, not. I'm or not my department, but the laser center is quite busy in doing optical coatings, specialized coatings themselves. So I guess there might be some opportunity to uh, think of um, generating new technology in this field and collaborate on the technology side of that actually more than on the application side. Yes, and I know that also uh, we are, uh, we collaborate uh, and collaborated also on a lot of fields Mm -hmm. uh, together, we, we know us uh, very well, I think so. And uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, um, yes it, it's a very small uh, field uh, with optical coatings and uh, with laser coatings especially. And so, uh, yes, I think in Germany, we, we know each other. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, I mean, Jena and Hannover, they are not super close to each other, but uh, there is no distance between <laughs> the German optical uh, industry. So good to know. That's a good news, of course. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's maybe we, we didn't hear any, anything yet from Chilla, from CMAX. So it would be nice to know um, now that we are a bit at the wrap up. So before the last talk, uh, why did you uh, attend this meeting? And, uh, and if you saw already some um, interesting thing for laser application for CMAX uh, company. Yeah, so hi. Uh, 
why did I attend this meeting? Because it's it's always interesting for us to to see what's going on in the market and uh, how we can collaborate, how we can help our customers to simulate uh, their uh, products uh, before trying it. So for everyone who would like to model uh, your your tools or, or your uh, devices, it's uh, always a, a good start before uh, building a new system to try it with a simulation. So Zimex offers uh, a lot of uh, tools for uh, simulating uh, lasers. So yeah, uh, feel free to contact us if uh, you would like to try our software. Very good. The message is clear. Very good. <laughs> so through, as you can connect directly or also to us. So we are here for this. So Jose will be happy to get all your requests. So now I'm really excited because finally it's time for Paula to speak. So we heard already that you're expert in meme shaping. You had already in your expertise, but <laughs> you have some slides. So you have for sure something really interesting to cover a bit the medical application and medical needs. So I really look forward. The floor is yours. And there you go. <laughs> Thank you. So let me share my screen. So, okay. One second. Okay, can you see? Yes, but it's still not. Uh, and uh, you, if you go to presentation mode, exactly, perfect. It is, go. yes. <laughs> Very good. Okay. <laughs> So my connection is not so fast here. So uh, first of all, thank you for uh, giving me the possibility to present our company, Leocon. Leocon is a quite new company in the uh, uh, Italian laser world, but we have about 17 year experience in the laser market and photonics in general. And uh, we aim to uh, develop and product OEM laser sources and systems uh, mainly based on the DPSS and dark diode uh, technologies for the industrial aesthetic and the medical markets. Our expertise include uh, optical design and simulation together with electronics design, software and film, mechanical design, and of course, prototyping and test uh, up to uh, production. Uh, we do we have our, we, we offer, let's say, about the consultancy uh, to uh, third companies uh, who want to develop their own solutions, or we have our own product portfolio. Uh, okay, so uh, we uh, let's say we, we, we handle and we do several kinds of uh, laser solutions and technologies, but now uh, uh, we have only a few minutes, so uh, I want to present. Uh, uh, two of our key technologies, okay, uh, that I think are of interest for the medical markets and that we are actually uh, um, offering to the medical or aesthetic market. First uh, is uh, what we call Daphne. Daphne is a fiber couple module in a liquid fiber. So uh, I think you know that the liquid fiber is an optical fiber where the core uh, is not glass made, but is uh, a liquid. And uh, uh, we have a patented technology for uh, the solution uh, and the patent is related to uh, liquid fiber coupling of high power, uh, let's say, uh, laser diode into the liquid fiber. High power means uh, actually a laser stacks uh, up to several uh, kilowatts of, uh, of peak power and uh, in pulse mode or in CW modes. We offer this solution to the medical market, but also we have industrial solution. Uh, one of the main advantage of using the, the, the liquid fiber is that we can get uh, uh, with a quite easy uh, uh, coupling system uh, an optical transmission efficiency uh, higher than 90%, uh, which is not so, so easy to reach uh, with high, high, so high power um, laser systems and laser diodes. And uh, uh, we can get uh, at the output uh, of an end piece, at the output of the, of the fiber, a uh, very homogeneous uh, uh, distribution of the power of the energy. You can see in this slide just the pictures of a simulated beam of uh, the real beam of, on a power meter and the beam uh, picture on, uh, taken with the beam profiler. So you can you can see how flat and homogeneous is the power distribution. And maybe this can answer to the question of some other companies here in this meeting. 
and uh, we can handle not only round beams, but we, uh, we did also other shapes uh, and also square beams or rectangular beams, uh, oval beams, uh, all of them with this very flat, uh, high homogeneous distribution. And uh, this is a suitable solution for, of course, the removal, but also for uh, dermatologic treatments, generally speaking, when the, the spot, uh, the, 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 the application area is large enough, meaning a few millimeters or larger, uh, because this, uh, this is a very suitable solution for, uh, for this application. The other key technology that we handle in Leocon is the blue laser, blue diode laser. Uh, we are, uh, I think we can define ourselves quite experts in uh, handling this, uh, this color, okay, this wavelength. Uh, we are talking about the 450 nanometers, uh, high power. High power means uh, for, since a uh, few watts up to uh, tens of watts, fiber coupled or a direct diode solution. Uh, in the medical market, we propose, of course, fiber coupled solution. And uh, the main advantages of the blue laser as are the, the high absorption by um, hemoglobin and melanin and uh, uh, almost no absorption by water, okay? And uh, uh, at present, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, some running application, uh, running product, let's say, uh, in the dental market. So we are selling uh, our modules to companies that uh, develop their own medical system and that buy purchase from us only the fiber couple module with different power or in case different wavelengths mixed together. Uh, blue is uh, 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 an ideal solution, especially for uh, treatment of soft tissues. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the examples we, we have uh, is that uh, the power required for surgery, oral surgery, is about one third than required with a commonly used 980 uh, nanometer uh, laser diode of about 10 watt. And uh, it um, helps uh, fast coagulation, so uh, we can have a sort of bloodless surgery, okay, and, and, and low debris outside. And so uh, we are not really experts and we don't want to be experts in the medical applications because uh, our technology, our expertise in, in is in manufacturing only the laser modules or let's say subcomponents, okay? So we leave uh, the, 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 uh, the identification of uh, the, 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 the treatments to our customers, okay? It's not real our job. So what I can say, uh, what I report uh, in my presentation is uh, are some of the application that our customers are actually doing with uh, our blue lasers, which is dermatological surgery, dental surgery, blood vessel treatments, you know, also spiders um, on, on skin and whatever. So aesthetic treatments is uh, in, this, uh, in this way. Uh, acne treatment, we have two customers that are validating uh, our uh, laser solution. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, together with the liquid fiber, to get a very flat spot or large area spot for acne treatment. And then uh, uh, we uh, are uh, treating some uh, case study uh, only on prostate surgery and liver surgery with the company with a high power uh, blue laser up to 30 watt uh, CW power. So uh, together with the blue, uh, for the medical market, we offer um, multi-wavelength modules that mix together in a single fiber, both liquid fiber or standard glass fiber, uh, up to four different wavelengths in the range of the visible and the near infrared. And uh, uh, so uh, these modules allow uh, to, to, to make a system uh, that can uh, make different treatments, including, of course, uh, dermatological treatments, surgery, aesthetic treat treatments, once again, biostimulation and physiotherapy. Uh, the most uh, commonly uh, used or required uh, 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 wavelengths from our customer in the near infrared range are uh, uh, between the uh, 800 nanometers up to uh, 1550 nanometers, roughly. And uh, in the visible uh, range, uh, usually is the blue laser, green and red. Uh, all of them uh, are, I would say, powerful lasers. So in the range of watt or tens of watts. In the pictures, I just report some examples of the technology we handle. So from 
a single very small three to five watts blue laser up to uh, green and, and red coupled together as an example of what we did and uh, up to um, uh, 30 watt blue uh, laser technology. Uh, we are really focused on this blue, uh, blue technology, let's say with developments. And uh, so what is our expertise is uh, we, we don't manufacture the laser chip, of course, we buy it, but we do all the beam shaping in this case to, uh, to, to fiber couple the laser or the multi-wavelength solution uh, or uh, in other application to, to treat, uh, to treat the, the, the beam with sort of beam shaping optics. So we are quite really experts in, in this. And uh, so uh, my, um, my presentation ends here because uh, you asked to be fast. And so now I am, uh, you know, open to questions uh, or whatever. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paola. Your first ever epic meeting and you were on yeah. time and you were funny yeah. <laughs> and you were constructive. You are an epic star. I hope to have you here soon. Eh? You know Thank what you. I mean? Uh, Paola, uh, what can they do for you? What can you do for them? Okay, so what you can do for us, uh, I would like to have... Uh, uh, a little bit stronger cooperation with the uh, diet manufacturers. Uh, I mean, people who can handle the laser chip because we are looking for a reliable, even more reliable suppliers for these blue laser chips for, uh, to, to improve uh, our uh, product portfolio in this sense, uh, of course. And, have a lot of uh, we are, can you give me? Can you give them a challenge, like something that they can? Because I have everybody taking notes. So blue laser for... bar. I, we want a blue laser bar. Now we handle single chips. So the the high high power solution that that we we make are based on uh, multi single emitters. Uh, you know, uh, coupled together with some optical systems, which are expensive and also how to know critical may be hard to be reliable and whatever. So we would like to handle laser bars. <laughs> we, we, uh, we are able to do with the infrared lasers, but we, we want the, the blue one. And also uh, what, what we can offer, of course, are uh, OEM um, uh, laser modules or how to say sub modules to all uh, people that uh, manufacture uh, medical laser systems. We are not a medical laser company, so our expertise in, is in doing some modules or components in general, which include optics. <laughs> So That's for me, it was a, a really good meeting, you know, Paola, because we managed to understand what everybody can do for each other. So it is already 5.50 and I really want to apologize for the 20 minutes, but I'm going to share with you because while I was at this meeting, I was taking a lot of notes, uh, the same thing as many of you, and I was chatting with many of you. So I, I put together one slide that really summarized what in my opinion has been the generation of many, many, many potential leads. The first one we talked today with uh, Stefano, he shared with us that monitoring temperature during operation, that's his headache, that's what he's looking and he's exploring anything that we can do for them so this is of course one of the big points of this meeting let's try to find partners for for the stefano regucci's group at the cipc in a, in a, in switzerland to satisfy this demand the second thing i see a big market trend which is integration of functionality on the beam delivery of the fiber. We were talking about OCT, we were talking about Raman, we we're talking about integrating temperature measurements, perhaps FBGs. I see a huge trend there that we need to explore further, but there are many companies who are going to be introduced after this, so things will move. The, the big market seems to be tattoo removal. Iris Song was for me, I have to say, Will, and you were the star today on not only the presentation, but the cooperations that you want to, to make. And there it was clear that we are looking for an homogeneous square beam. And I think there are companies like Asphere like FISBA, we need to cooperate, we need to interact faster, further. Uh, kidney stones were presented by, by Lisa Laser, the Tulium laser was, uh, was fantastic, but what was even better is because Lumix asked them, can we actually use a laser diode? And that generated a lot of debate there, maybe there is a big opportunity there. The next big thing seems to be laser diodes for the dermatology and also other applications, like the picture I stole from Nils from, from Lumix there. There are many, many applications, this to be, seems to be growing, but I think 
what they have seen for the system integrators is that they are looking at the laser bugs, which was presented by FinTech as a packaging challenge. Can we actually control all the bars independently? Can we switch them on and off? Can we control the different temperature drift? That is clear. Clinical trials and regulatory standards was something that we need to address. Slava was talking about how to connect further with that. We have a meeting at Philips with different locations for clinical trials that's going to be addressed. Uh, laser optics coatings filters application dependent, Altecna, Optic Balsers, Optoman, Aspherico, and FISVA. And in the line that was deleted by the last picture, sorry about that, we talk about fiber, specialty fiber. And there I see a huge growth, especially in the mid infrared. And there we have a lot of opportunity for collaboration with companies like Art Photonics, or OFS. There is a lot of room for cooperation. Be ready, you're gonna get a lot of introductions after this meeting. Thank you very much for a fantastic, fantastic meeting. I would like to once again apologize for this extra 20 minutes. I think they are totally worth it. Until the next time, thank you very much. See you soon, stay healthy. The thing is almost over. We are soon going to travel again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Also from my side. Bye-bye. <laughs>